All right. Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting for June 4th, 2019. Um, on tonight's agenda, we have liaison reports followed by the manager reports and public comment. Um, then we'll go into board business, which includes the fiscal year 20 election schedule. We'll be discussing the town forest thinning project. Uh, we'll then have a thrilling discussion regarding appointing volunteers to boards and committees. There are 45 appointees. Um, then we'll have two discussions, one on the role of the select board liaisons and another on the creation of a select board onboarding manual. Then we'll discuss future agendas and minutes approval. So we will start with liaison reports. I think I started with John last time, so we'll start with Andy. Um, my liaison Thank report you. is the VAST report, so okay. that's what I've been doing. Excellent. And Thank you. Um, so the ad hoc committee that's looking at establishing a human rights group met last night and will and plans to meet um, now regularly the first and third Monday uh, of each month uh, until until end of job. Um, one of the the main uh, to dos of that group is looking at what other uh, communities do in terms of their organization structure and mission with the, um, with their different um, human rights organizations in their communities, both uh, pu public and private sector um, groups. Uh, I did bring the question uh, that was raised at our last meeting um, relative to whether uh, in the context of a future human rights group there would be any benefit to having uh, a non-resident on the board when you'd given you'd cited the example of you know potentially the board wanting to have a rabbi for example on the board um, the the ad hoc committee um, had different different thoughts on that question um, I, you know we that that group is still determining what a future human rights group would look like um, but thought that there may be some benefit but thought that it might be more palatable if it was narrowly tailored and focused such that you know something like um, you know there is an interest in um, amending the bylaw and charter specifically to add you know a met co-parent for example on a future human rights board but that's that's not the recommendation at this time mm -hmm. but that that was the that was that conversation okay. um for the tarrant lane meeting i had been under the impression that there was a a meeting um the, the, the day following our meeting, that ended up getting pushed back. Um, and so in fact, the, the next Wakefield CBA meeting on, on that topic is, uh, is Wednesday the 12th. Okay. okay. John? I actually have been traveling. I haven't have been derelict in my duties. I haven't been to any place other than here. Uh, so I don't have anything to report. Mark? Uh, just a couple of quick ones. Um, the Council on Aging um, have now uh, determined meets the second Monday of each month, so there's a meeting coming this coming Monday, uh, which I, I plan to attend. Um, the second thing is the Sunoco project. Um, actually having a cup of coffee with the President Matt Majori on Thursday morning, just to introduce myself and say hello and see what's happening. Um, could I talk about one thing that's not liaison, but it's board? Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that I've been doing as Secretary is responding to emails that come in the door just with an, an acknowledgement mm -hmm. and i have to say people are floored that they're getting an acknowledgement and really appreciate it that they know it was received that they know and you're doing it very fast it'll come up yeah yeah i think that's been that's that's helped it a lot um but so far the, the response has been great people have mm -hmm. just been thanks for getting back to me really appreciate it mm -hmm. um and I, I sign it as secretary for the board mm -hmm. yeah. so i've been doing that and i think it's really good Great. Good. Yep. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, my report is also uh, 
focus entirely on the fast, which will have the appointments. Um, I also, I think most of you attended the Reading 375 opening night. We have some representatives here, but I just want to say it was a phenomenal event. It was such a great way to kick off um, the celebration. I am very much looking forward to the rest of the events that are planned. Um, and Gene and Alan will say more on that in a little bit. So I will hand it off to Bob for the time manager's work. Thank you. Um, two of the emails, um, one in your current packet, one that's perhaps more recent, I'll respond to. First one is National Grid was in your packet, and a couple emails came in in the last day or so that Mark uh, answered. Um, we have complete answers that are interesting. Um, because of the Lawrence gas incident, uh, DPU has stepped in and made it mandatory for all new projects to go to a third party review, an engineering review. Mm -hmm. So some of the most critical work in Reading is a new project. So it has to go through a longer process. So that's part one. And that's specifically the problem we had where we had sub-zero weather up in the um, you know, Wakefield Street area. That's So that's, that's why we're not doing that? No, I'll get to the good news. But that's why it's not in your packet as being something on the list. Okay. Um, National Grid is highly aware that that is their number one priority in Reading but they couldn't put it in the list of approved projects because it isn't yet. But they did tell our fire chief today um, that um, Charles, Wakefield, and Timberneck, and it's enlarged to quite a large project, will have full uh, gas main replacement, and they are quoting a time of three weeks from now. So the engineering review must be underway and must be almost complete. So that's, that's really good news. Um, uh, the second uh, email comment, which was from Red, uh, Fred a couple weeks ago, and I, I said it last time, I'll say it again. The Haverhill Street issue um, is you know, in PTTF's lap and is scheduled for a future board meeting. I can't remember, honestly, if it's your next one or it might be July, but it's one of those two. So we'll have more information then. A um, num number of other things I want to go over quickly. Today you received an email from uh, Victor and Sanson Yellow on senior tax relief. And he's just asking for your opinions and advice in it well in advance of when he visits the board in August. Um, he needs to help prepare himself for where all the directions the conversation should go. So if any of the board members um, have any discussion, please feel free to share that. If it's a topic that's relatively new to you, either Victor and I are happy to sit down with you and discuss it. Um, he implemented a similar version of Wakefield with a little less choice. I think, I think that the board has a 1.5 factor there and they don't vote. Don't quote me on that, but it's a fixed number. I think it's 1.5. Um, and other communities have taken different options based on Reading Star. Uh, legislatively, apparently the process is still a bit complicated. Uh, Victor's trade association is trying to do something that Victor doesn't like. So you can only imagine that that's an interesting discussion. They're trying to tailor something to cities more than towns with cities with large staffs. So they want to make it, I don't know, just way more complicated. It requires more staff time, honestly. Beyond that, I don't even know a lot of details. So that's something he will certainly update you in August. But just to remind the board, as he did in his email, if we don't start the uh, home rule petition process this summer and the legislature doesn't come up with a solution that we can adopt, then ours will expire after one more year. So our, our working assumption has to be we have to do something. So we're good for the next You're classification for the, period? Yes, for the August application period for seniors. That one's fine this summer. No. And then through your classification in the fall, that one's fine. So it's after that, we'd be finished. From a timing perspective, Bob, what does Victor need from us and when? Um, he doesn't need anything in advance of August other than your opinion so he can tailor a presentation. Um, but in order to get the home rule petition process started, we want to have a full discussion with you in August. And if there's any lingering questions that are still outstanding, we want to wrap those up as quickly as possible in August, September. So would it be sufficient time if for Victor if at our next meeting, since obviously this isn't on the agenda, so we can't necessarily opine, but right. uh, for planning purposes, if we, our next meeting, I think, is June, June 20th. June 25th. Something, okay. Something like so for June 25th, if we provide our opinion on that, that's perfectly Is fine. that fine? Okay. Absolutely. So let's yeah, plan on that course. then. But we could proceed with his request of sending yeah. you can your thoughts. Send thoughts, in your right? thoughts at yeah. any time. Um, yeah. Sure. I, I interpreted it as thoughts and questions. Yeah. So I, I sent him right. quite a few questions. Okay. To get it yeah, because there's, you know, the qualification has 
caused some concern and has caused this board mm -hmm. yeah. um, much against objection to not fully utilize. Um, well, let's, so let's we're table we'll get to discussions that, you know, for now. Another time. So, yeah, I intend to send them a, an email okay. with thoughts on how we can retailer so that. So how about everyone individually s yeah. email Victor any independent <coughs> questions that we may have. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can bring this up at our next agenda on the 25th. Uh, for board discussion then because we can have individual questions but he needs guidance from us as a full board okay. um, Bob uh, Bob um, could you just explain again the process so so what we our senior tax relief which I think we said at 1.5 .5 is current right most recent and um, we're going to do it again mm -hmm. but then after that um, we can't do it anymore after that unless what happens? Unless Redding asks for another home rule petition. It's only allowed to adopt it for three years. Okay. The OR said no longer than three years. Yeah. So presumably you could probably ask for another three year home rule petition. I don't know. Yep. Um, and I, I'd say right now that's the course forward I would suggest. And then there's a possibility that the state will adopt some sort of law legislatively that town meeting could adopt. Mm -hmm. Um, and whether that influences you know, the DOR's thinking on allowing another three years, I don't know. The reason they didn't want to do it before more than three years is because they knew there was going to be a legislative solution proposed. One would suppose we're closer to that now, so maybe they won't allow three years. I don't know. But if you don't do anything, you won't have it. You won't have it. Okay. We can always adjust accordingly if and when the state makes a determination. Yes. Okay. But I, we're not operating at 1.5. Now, uh, it was. Well, a, that's I think it's one point one point five is what we voted on that's last year. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. and is so is two our. That was the first year. That's our maximum capacity. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, two other logistical uh, timing issues. Uh, Taste of Metro North is June twelfth next week. It's at the um, RMHS Field House. It's part of the three seventy fifth birthday. Uh, starts at six o'clock. Twenty five dollar individual tickets. Sixty dollar family tickets if you buy them in advance. Um, and if you wait till the door, it's 30 and $70. And if you go to a website that has all the words Taste of Metro North, you'll, you'll find more information. Uh, a week after that, on Thursday, June 20th, um, I, I've been invited to three events that I should go to, and I can't humanly do that, so I'll try to go to two. Uh, Weston and Sam just having an open house. There's a new business in town, which I'll attend. The Chamber of Commerce is having a uh, big shindig at Woburn, and I'll be able to get to the end of that. But I just got something from the light department about having a, a solar workshop that same night, and I can't logically get to all three. So if uh, the liaison of one of the board members could get to the uh, RMLD event, um, you know that it's I'm intending to go to the chamber event. Okay. I have the RMLD one on my calendar. Okay. Yeah, I do as well. And that's instead of the, or it's at the start of the regular meeting. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the chamber event is their 30th anniversary. Right, and I, I probably won't be there until 7 or Yeah, I, I, I've intended to go. Okay. I got invited to it. I'll go. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask the board if they had any further thoughts on this Chapter 61 land in terms of should we definitively add that to an agenda. You don't have to answer me now, but I just want to ask that question. Where, where is that land? Is that what um, the parcel we discussed at the last I, meeting? I discussed it very briefly. It was in your packet at the last meeting. Right. It's up. Um, by home goods, just short of home goods by the veterinarian's property. So the town has a period of decision that goes well into the uh, early fall. That's not urgent, but on the other hand, it's something that if we're going to pursue it, we need to get going. Right. I mean, it's so not the fair. Board has an opportunity to match the purchase price, as I recall, four hundred thousand dollars for however many yeah. acres it was. And was Con Conservation Committee going to? They were going. They, they owe an opinion, this? but they have not issued it yet. They okay. they told me through their administrator they were going to write the board a memo. They have not done so yet. Okay. So, do we have an idea on timing for that? Well. You're, you're probably not having a full board in July. You could probably do it the first meeting in August and you'd be okay. Uh, in terms of having a discussion, presumably Conscom will be ready. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll circle back to you and, and tell you differently. Great, thank you. Um, just so you know, um, a lot of staff is working with Austin Prep. Um, they're doing some field work, some renovation uh, on their property. 
but we have a real solid opportunity to improve one of our worst drainage problems, which is Willow Street. So we're trying to come up with a creative way where we can both be better off. And it's been very challenging so far. There's you know, the meeting we had last week, I think I counted seven lawyers in the room. Matt Cornell is one of them. So, yeah. But it's complicated because we're trying to figure out how the town can work on private property or the, how, how the town can somehow effectuate an improvement that's that's our problem in the roadway, but it's not on our land. So we're trying to creatively solve that problem. And from the past, Austin Prep is great to work with. They're just a phenomenal community partner. That's quite a project they're yeah. getting ready to undertake, too. Yeah. You said Willow? Um, they're going to work, do some field work on their property, but the flooding <coughs> when Willow has to be closed. It's pretty major inconvenience. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, last week I attended um, on Thursday one of the library community conversations meetings that I know Ann was there for part of it. Um, it was it was really good. It was mm -hmm. seeing a lot of people that I don't usually see and, and some <coughs> I hadn't seen for years. And I have to say the thing I was most impressed is it was a tremendously positive conversation yes. by virtually everyone in the room. There was no complaining, there was no you know, wait this should be better. There were so many people that said this town is so much better than when I moved in and the topics that were being discussed. It was just nice to hear. I didn't tell Jean yet, but one of the comments was, and the signage is great. <laughs> I don't even know the signs. Um, and, and I do have a final comment I want to share with the board um, when you're going over the, the uh, minutes to ask some questions about the meeting you had with the Board of Health as to what the next steps are. So I'll hold those till you get to the minutes. That's all I have. Thank you. I apologize, I missed one of the liaison pieces. You, you reminded me with the RMLD. I attended the uh, RMLD um, audit meeting, and um, they have a clean audit. There were no uh, comments, no notes. Um, the meeting was very smooth. The struggle we have right now is that they've changed their fiscal year structure. So we see six month reports instead of annual reports. So it's hard to have comparables to, to actually go directly versus the previous year at the moment. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that problem one more one more time, and then that'll be finished. Uh, but that it was clean. The committee voted unanimously to approve. And all was good. Okay. Um, I actually realized when you mentioned RMLD as well. So to emphasize the fact that RMLD will be hosting um, a special discussion on the use of solar panels on June 20th. You can check out their website for more details on the agenda. But if you're interested in obtaining solar panels, that would be a great meeting to attend um, or watch on RCTV. And the other thing is, who is the CPDC liaison or who are? CPTC liaisons? I think Mark and Andy. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, so one of the things we talked about at the last meeting was inviting them to our PTTT. TF, did I get that right? Is it three T's, Bob? Um, meeting, which will probably take place either at the end of this month or in July. So for those of you that are the liaisons, if you can informally, we can invite them formally as well, but I thought it might be nice if it came as an informal invitation for them to join us, should they be interested in that discussion. Sorry, when is that? Well, it's still to be determined. Okay. It'll sort of, depending on when Bob thinks it'll, yeah. the staff will be ready, so. Um, all right, so we will move on to public comment. Uh, so um, I would ask that anyone wishing to speak for public comment, please keep it to topics that are under the purview of this board. Um, we ask that you limit comments to two minutes. Um, no election-related, derogatory, threatening comments will be permitted. Um, by show of hands, is anyone interested in saying something for public comment? Gene and Alan. Okay. Uh, I'll start. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Since we've already we're underway now, we thought we'd split it up from the before and after side. Yeah. So I'm going to cover. I know most of you were at opening ceremonies, and thank you. That really meant a lot to us to see so many of our elected officials and the town manager there. It really meant a lot to us. Um, I will say that the attendance exceeded even our wildest hopes. We sort of had the number at which we consider the event a success, and the number like outside. We really, really hoped it would get that high, and it was hundreds beyond that. We were so happy with the response from the community. Um, I don't think I have to say much about it because you were all there, but the energy was amazing, um, particularly after the event. Um, when the band started playing mm -hmm. and people were going to the different venues, um, I will tell you we blew through I think about 450 ice creams in an hour to give you a sense of the crowds. Um, 
And one of the highlights for me was that when the band was playing is the, is the sunset and the lights were kind of illuminated. Um, people were dancing on the common. I didn't expect that to happen, mm -hmm. which people were in a great mood and the weather helped. Spectacular mm -hmm. night. Um, the following day, Saturday at three o'clock at the Performing Arts Center at the high school, we had a concert for Reading. Also extremely well attended, six, maybe 700 people there. So almost a full house in the Performing Arts Center. An unbelievable performance of a lot of different local groups that have their own fan base but that I don't think usually get together all at once and perform together. So really well received concert, great attendance, um, and just a lot of good energy heading in as we start the celebration. I am balancing some family commitments tonight. There is a very important concert happening at Parker Middle School in a half an hour. So I am going to leave my colleague with um, the upcoming events. All right. Just going to remind you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. All right. Next event is tomorrow night. Paint the Town Art Walk opening reception at 6 to 8 at the um, uh, at Pleasant Street Center. It's a chance to listen to some music and meet the artist. I don't know if you've noticed that all of the artwork is in all of the uh, storefronts through the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Friday night is Tavern at the Tavern, 18th century music and tavern performers, light dinner buffet featuring traditional New England fare. Uh, tickets are, are on sale, there's still some tickets left, so get online. Uh, Saturday is the big day. We start with the library with their own 150th anniversary, it's part of our 375th as well. Our town, your story. Bring your photos, your letters, uh, special memories to be scanned in and added to the, um, the digital uh, collection. Clubhouse at the Tavern, we're back to the Tavern. By the way, uh, the tent went up today, if you haven't seen it yet, down next to the Tavern. Uh, Clubhouse at the Tavern is 11 to 4, and that goes along with the 1860s era baseball game uh, that will be played at Washington Park. Uh, there'll be hot dogs, sausages, Cracker Jack, lawn games, the Red Sox game on in the tent. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what day? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Saturday is the day, there's a lot of things going on. That's 11 to 4. Porch Fest starts at noon, that goes noon to six. That is also exceeding our wildest expectations. We used Melrose as the model, and they had 35 bands. We are already at 46, and count the wow. day, we're still adding wow. a couple more. And that's at 32 locations, 46 musical acts. Pop country, rock, Dixieland, grunge, punk, acapella, and I think I've probably forgotten a couple. Saturday night, revelry at the tavern, a little bit more modern version of tavern at the tavern. Cocktail attire, signature drinks, sweet and savory treats, music and dancing with a cash uh, beer and wine bar. Monday, Charter Day, the actual birthday. We have an event called Reading Speaks. We have 30 quotes, poems, stories, um, newspaper articles, town meeting votes, uh, legislative votes, some things that are strictly local, some things that tie the town into what's going on in the world, including the revolution. It's not really a history, but rather 30 snapshots to the town's history. And it goes from the 1600s right up to next Monday. And the most important part of the day is we're ending it with birthday cake. <laughs> Wednesday, you mentioned earlier, is the Reading North Reading uh, Chambers Taste of Metro North. That's 6 to 8.30 at the Field House. Saturday... It's actually Rotary Club. What did I say? You said it. You said the, it was okay. the Chamber. Oh, it's I'm sorry. sponsored by Rotary. North Reading North Reading Rotary. Okay. Um, Saturday the 15th, the grand finale. Again, another day with a lot going on. Friends and Family Day, the traditional Lions Club uh, event. We have the dog parade at 2.30, and I believe we're up to 92 dogs, the last I heard. Uh, hot air balloon from Remax Encore, weather committee. Food truck festival. Uh, we have a concert featuring both the North Shore Barbershop Harmony Chorus, as well as the Reading Community Concert Band. And the band will play into the fireworks. And the fireworks is the grand finale, but then on Sunday the 16th, I guess we start working on the 4th. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Any questions? Great. It's wonderful, great. Alan. Thank you so much to you and all the volunteers well, for making this happen. A lot of people involved. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, so we will move on to the fiscal year 20 election cycle, and we have the town clerk, uh, Lord, Lord Jemmy. So it's actually calendar year 2020 elections. Um, we go from March, so let me show you the dates here. There we go. 
March 3rd being the presidential primary, the town election on April 7th. The state primary is um, set for September 15th, but that date will change. And then the presidential election on November 3rd. A lot of elections for two next year. So I just wanted to take the opportunity while I'm here to give a few deadlines and get some of the word, word out to the public and also kind of point out some of the deadlines and how it's going to affect. Part of the reasoning behind the presentation here is to talk about whether or not we're going to combine the April 7th election with the November 3rd, president. I'm oh, sorry, March 3rd um, primary, the state primary, or presidential primary. So um, the biggest, uh, as far as March 3rd presidential primary, the most important date for the public to be aware of is the town committees the Democratic and the Republican town committees in town need to notify the uh, Secretary of Commonwealth the number of members that they're going to have on the ballot and that has to be notified they need to be notified by August 1st and I will be reaching out to the committees to let them know that they need to have the number of, of uh, how many names they're going to have on the ballot it's really important that that information gets to the Secretary of the Commonwealth so that we don't end up with a blank ballot with a lot of write-ins um, the April 7th, should the local election be on the 7th, that the nomination papers need to be available no later to the um, candidates by the 8th of January, which generally means that they'll be available within December. I try to do it towards the end of November, early December, um, but the required date is January 8th. And then um, the September 15th, Again, the state is going to change by federal, um, the state, um, state law is set so that the election date, the primary is set on a specific date, but federal law put a new law in place about five, four or five years ago that the, the state law doesn't meet. So that's the reason why the September primary has been changing um, every year or every two years. Um, and it's been moving up. So 2016, it was the day after Labor Day, and that's the reason why it moved up. So it'll probably end up being about the same this year in 2020. And then the November 3rd um, presidential, pri presidential election, um, the biggest date that the public would probably be interested in is making sure that they're registered to vote on time, and that deadline is October 14th. 2020. So I wanted to talk a little bit about combining the two elections, um, the March 3rd and the April 7th, um, and how that affects the deadlines. That, and there's a couple of other issues that we want to talk a little bit about too, but <clears throat> if the local election is moved to March 3rd, the nomination papers would have to be available to the candidates no later than December 4th, which means that they'll probably be issued sometime in early November. Um, voter registration will close on February 12th, and then um, the <coughs> warrant closing date will move up so that in the warrant um, in town meeting, um, generally are on the same warrant. Uh, so according to, according to the, is it in Massachusetts general law, but anyway, it's some, there, it states that if the town meeting and the election are more than 35 days apart, they have to be on two separate warrants. But we'll still have to issue two separate warrants and keep the town meeting warrant closing date the same because of the way that our wording our general um, bylaw is. And let me show you what I mean by that. So the calculations that are in our general bylaw and our charter state that the annual town meeting is always the fourth Monday in April and that the warrant closes the fifth Tuesday before the election. So we move the March, um, April 7th election to March 3rd, we have to use that date as the closing of the town meeting warrant because of the way that the wording is in the calculation. Okay, so that means that the town meeting warrant will close on February 18th, or can't, has to close no later than February 18th, 2020. 
which is kind of early. It has to be posted by yeah, February 18th. 28th of January. It has to be closed by the January. It has to be closed I'm sorry, by yes, January the 28th of January. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are paying attention to my. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting. We're always scrambling with the current one we have, let alone. Yeah. Well, and uh, it, um, the town of Reading has been moving the local election to the same day as the primary since 1988. Hmm. So it, it's you know part of the history of the way Reading has done things. How has that um, impacted the budget process in years past? Well, <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so in in years past, the budget has always been, and then including this year, the budget has always been created by combining them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so what should have happened is my mind process should have thought about this during the budgeting process that I would have liked to have tried to keep them separate. But um, I didn't think along those lines until... Um, about a month ago, after the budget was passed, to be honest with you. So I, I, I actually was thinking about would the select board, the, the school committee and the finance committee need to start the FY21 budget process earlier if the warrant is going to close earlier. Oh, I see where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's an interesting, interesting question. I don't think so, but I, I do want to give a little more. <coughs> Generally speaking, when you have to close a warrant and you generally meet every two weeks, I like to schedule you to do it two weeks sooner than you have to, just in case. So a January 28th date, you were probably going to do it in the middle of February, so that's only two weeks sooner than I would have asked you to do it. But the question is, if the 28th is a deadline, should you do it in the middle of January? And that's right in the middle of the school committee budget discussion. I, I don't think it affects the warrant, really. Um, unless there were outstanding issues like, are we going to do the capital project for that one yet? And it wasn't decided until January. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll give that more thought. That's an interesting question. So the, the warrant to me, Bob, is I, because we can close the warrant, it's the posting of it by the 18th that would need to include the budget. That I'm would not be too worried about that part. It's really the language of articles. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're going to have an article on a specific debt authorization, that has to be done by January at some point instead of February. Okay. I think the budget by itself as a standalone is okay. But there is still some question as to how state law and how town charter interacts in terms of, we say the first article is the election of town meeting. Mm -hmm. That may, not, may or may not still be possible depending on how things work out. Right. So in the past, whenever we've combined them, we put it on the same warrant. Um, but nobody's ever... No one's complained. No one's complained about the fact that it's more than 35 days. Yeah. yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I was working here a few years before I even knew that. Yeah. So <laughs> one of those things that you learn when you attend training. Mm. <laughs> so cost <laughs> estimates um, that I wanted to just kind of point out the differences of cost. If we hold the election um, on March 3rd, we're looking, and these are estimates, um, at 27000 for the March 3rd election, and then for the April would be 26000 And if we combine them, it, or, I'm sorry, so that means totally it'll be about $53,000 to hold two separate elections. But if we combine them, we're looking at about 44000 and 43 was budgeted. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because so it does save some money to combine them. It saves about nine thousand dollars to combine them. Mm -hmm. um, but we run into a lot of other issues too. And this is the first time since I just since I've been um, town clerk that I've asked that they not be combined. And I'm going to go into the reason, one of the reasons why now. Um, one is that there's several reasons, but one being the pre to, to get enough staff. I'm required by law to have six staff, at least six staff members per precinct, per election. Um, so if we ha if we combine them, that means that I have to have at least twelve. But ideally, we we should have oh, fourteen for to be combined. Mm -hmm. Um, which in March is a rough time of year to get election workers because Reading, the majority of P folks are down in Florida. The majority of my election workers are in Florida. Interesting. What happens if we you can't get 123? 
Um, that's not an option. You have to. That's not an option. Like it's illegal. You can borrow from other towns. I can. The, the only requirement is they have to be registered voters in the state of Massachusetts. Okay. Um, and I can very easily call some of my friends in New York and say, "Come register to vote in Mass." But I'd rather not do that. Um, it's easier to borrow. Come people move for to Massachusetts, local. establish <laughs> residence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the other issue too is that, uh, it, and I had a conversation with um, uh, Michelle Tessinari uh, a couple days ago to see where we stood with this because right now there's current legislation to try and have early voting in March for the primary. Um, and we still have no idea where that stands at this point, whether or not it's going to happen or not. Um, it, if it does, there's going to be five days of early voting in for March 3rd, and um, I put the dates in here. There we go. So if it does happen, they'll be on or around the 21st of February to the 28th. Um, and the, the problem with that is that if there is early voting for the primary and we hold the local election on that day, we have to have early voting for the local election as well, which means that we will be holding two elections, two separate elections requiring, again, a two dub double staff for early voting. So that's where you see the line where it says early voting staff per day. And we, for those five days, we're going to have to have at least eight people if we combine them. And then on election day, we'll have to have a four additional in, in pl on top of that 123 per precinct. So we're looking at having to have uh, quite a bit of, I mean, quite a bit of additional workers. Um, anything's possible. But it would, it would, it would actually cost, there would be, we would be required to have more workers, but it would cost us less. Um, so the cost that we have here does not include any cost for early voting. So not including early voting is part of the cost factor. It would cost about $9,000 less to combine them. What would the estimate be, Bob? Um, just in terms of election workers, I forget the numbers, but you need two sets of 75 or one set of 130. Yeah, so the 75s could be the same people. So when you combine them, there's less total, but there's more human beings is the challenge. Right. He, I, that was in her yeah, yeah, next slide, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 74 versus 120. Add them together, but it's 74 people. Right, right. Um, they're the same people. We do them with separate elections. Right. right. Pretty much. Uh, what is, do we know what the cost mm -hmm. estimate would be for the early, the four days of early voting or five days of early voting? Um, no, I did not prepare that, but I might be able to pull that up for you. So if we look at if we take a look at what the cost was for the early voting, um, but at the by, lab. by way of clarification, though, before you, we sort of go down that rabbit hole, um, is you said early voting may or may not be required. Correct. And we don't know yet. It is going. To, it's definitely required in November yeah. for two weeks. It's just the the March one is sure the one about. we don't know about yet. And it, and right. and the way that the law is written for early voting is if we have a local election on the same day, we have to provide early voting for both, which means that we'll be running two elections for those five days. And that is a staffing and not a funding challenge? Correct. Okay. But is it, just it, becomes is it a space challenge? We've talked about that because um, when we did it the first time here, this was the room that was used, right. and the lines were unbelievable at the end. It was right up to the parking lot, having wrapped down. But you can't do them in the same room. If you combine them, we've talked about co-opting this room, having a walk-through, and then you'd have to clear this room out every night for night meetings. So, you know, it is possible we'll look at other space. Possible. Which um, we have to get permission from the state to go someplace else other than town hall mm -hmm. for early voting, um, yes. which I don't see a problem. You know, as long as as long as um, it's handicapped accessible, they'll pretty much okay it. So well, the, the problem is really around votes. I mean, voters are accustomed if they're going to do early voting, they vote right. here. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they show up and they can't vote, do they say, the "Heck with it, I'll." Not vote early. I mean, you know, there's people are creatures of habit, particularly when it comes to voting. Mm -hmm. 
So I, well, on the, it, uh, given that early voting may not be optional, the cost is less of a determining factor yeah. for me because if it's mandatory, it's mandatory and it costs what it costs. So uh, we can sort of table that. And, and you're saying it's not going to cost more to, to have two elections than one for early vote. For early voting, it's just a matter of staff staffing and the challenges to find adequate staffing. Correct. Yep. Okay. I think the gating item is the amount of human beings needed, and mm -hmm. for early voting, that's a small number, so we'll find them. Okay. And the money is, we'll work that out. Mm -hmm. So just real quick, in 2016, um, early voting was two weeks, and it cost us about $7,300. Um, and some of that was reimbursed by the state. So, um, Laura, did you say that that uh, the Marsh primary may be, is that set or he, that could move? The, no, the March primary is set. Okay. It's the September primary that's okay. going to change. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, Two quick questions, if I could. Um, Bob, it's worth thinking more about that budget timing question. Because right now, you're submitting your budget to the FinCom by the start of February. Um, these combined or separate elections are already in the budget that's been passed. So we may or may not need additional 20. funding. Sorry. The, the primary sorry. next year, yep. September nope. 1 is... Same difference. <laughs> not, not the cost for doing <laughs> this. Okay but the process of deciding what the budget for the following year will be. Right. Not for this in general, for the entire town and the schools. Mm -hmm. So that process now culminates around the end of January and goes to FinCom. You put it together, then it goes to FinCom. This would force that at least two weeks earlier, if not more. That's what Ann was asking, and I, I have to think about that. I'm not sure. I, I actually think that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that some thought. Yeah. So. so Discussions that ended in January would be too late. And they always end then. Yes. And they're so pleased cool. to do that. Clearly, yes. that's, if you will, much more of a school committee issue. And that hasn't been an issue in the past because we didn't realize the 35 day rule. Is that? Kind of. <laughs> well, <laughs> is, it, is it possible that there was like a placeholder put into the warrant? Um, and well, the, the warrant itself doesn't have budget figures. That's what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, it says pass a budget. And the, the motion on the floor then has to be specific. So the actual warrant that you have to close does not have to have a final budget. It isn't the warrant. The warrant uh, is, does not include not the budget correct. numbers. It includes the concept of passing a budget without right. the details. Except for articles that are specific, such as that I need this much for capital, or I need to do this other exercise. You know, uh, this year we need more money, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the budget itself, I think, is OK. But it does speed up some other things, for sure. So we try to do our capital planning in November anyway, so that shouldn't be a big problem. Yeah. But it's worth thinking about, and I will. Laura, I know you have a few more slides. We'll let you get through them. Yeah. So um, I also just wanted to kind of point out, like I said, we did, I know that we've combined since 1988. And in 1984, they had two elections in March, one week apart. They were not combined. They were both in um, separate, one exactly one week apart. Um, but I wanted to point out the registered voters and the increase in the total number of, of the, for as far as logistics, the total number of ballots. The state has started warning the election officials that this election, this, the primary will bring out between 50 to 60 percent of voters at least. They're looking at a pretty high turnout. We're looking at a very long ballot. Um, at last I knew there was 24 names on the Democratic side, and then we have the town and, and uh, Democratic and Republican committee as well. So we're looking at a good sized ballot, which means that if you take a look at the numbers real quick, 20,000 registered voters, 50%, 10,000 people voting, 20,000 ballots that we have to deal with. Um, so that's- At one you know, time. At one time, correct. So that kind of plays into one of the reasons to try to separate them. 
I, I think there's another issue to that too because you're going to have a long list of names in the Democratic and Republican nominations in the presidential primary mm -hmm. and then you're going to have town meeting members and yeah. you know I mean at a certain point I, I think that you don't want to put our voters into overload not I mean, it's you can get confused easily. I think you know under those circumstances. So why don't we let Laura? I know we've got the ten forest coming up in a little bit. If you thank you for so I know, but um, so why don't we let Laura get through her slides and then we can ask all of her mm -hmm. her questions at the end. So I just wanted to point out one more thing on this slide. If you'll take a look at March 2016, the percentage it shows that a lot of them came in and voted for the primary and did not bother voting for the local, and I witnessed. Um, Mm -hmm. voters taking the local ballot and then just kind of basically tossing it and not voting it in, on many occasions. So um, the, the time that it takes to vote the two ballots is an issue. So quick overview. Wow. Um, two elections is good for the voters because it's one day for them to vote. It's better for the schools because it's one day that we're taking over the field house and then the cost savings, and again, that the budget was written for them to be combined. Um, again, because I didn't think about this until after the budget was processed. And then the cons of it, the lack of election staff, the logistics of the two elections with the two ballots, registered voter increase, um, we talked about the 20,000 ballots. And then, and as I say on here, you know, logistically we can pull anything off if we have the right number of people. And I mean, I can make anything work, but I really would like to consider doing these as two separate elections. Um, just real quick, the dates of early voting, if it does happen in March, we have already talked about. Um, we've also talked about the two elections, but then I also wanted to put a plug out there that in November, the early voting dates will be um, around October 16th to October 30th, and that's a definite for the November election. And then um, I also wanted to talk about the fact that we have um, in 2020 the federal census with our early voting and four elections happening. We're going to be very, excuse me, very busy in the clerk's office in 2020. Questions? So I'm going to kick us off with just one. When do you need an answer from us as far as when, uh, as far as whether we decide to have one election or two? What have you heard to say yesterday? <laughs> um, so I need to let the state know what date we're going to hold the um, a local election sometime in the very beginning of September, like September 1st at the very latest. Um, however, I'd like to know at least by August 1st because I really want to, if, if we're going to combine them, I really want to spend the summer, um, what's the word, campaigning for election oh, staff, for yeah. you know, to get more Recruiting. people working. Yeah. So Yeah, recruit, that's the word, recruit, thank you. So before we jump into questions, because I know there are more, um, Bob, can we, uh, let's add this to our June 25th. Okay agenda so that we as the board can have a sort of longer discussion i'm not going to be here on that date unfortunately when is the next can meeting just, bob when everyone is in attendance because i know your july meeting is not heavily attended we have yeah we only have one in july one. july 6 16. yeah yeah oops sorry and Am I right in thinking? Would this yeah. be okay? Yes. August sixth. Yes. So potentially August sixth. I won't be here for that one. Oh. <laughs> I am TBD. Yes. <laughs> well, we, uh, we can talk uh, about it. We'll certainly put it on a okay. meeting where you let's, have. Let's let's figure out what makes sense and maybe we'll find a creative solution. Well, we can always solution. call a separate a special that's, meeting. That's just what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's um okay, let's you. have. Uh, five more minutes for questions for Laura because I, I don't know and you had one. Sorry, bear with us, um, and then we'll and then we'll move on. And any additional questions can be at our follow up meeting. Anna. So from it's interesting because a few of the things that you list as cons sound you know just reading them sound to me like pros um, from a perspective of civic engagement, mm -hmm. people voting. Um, making it easier for people to vote, like early voting for one is early voting for both, uh, over 50% turnout, uh, registered voter increase. But 
are, are you saying those are cons from an administrative perspective that that all of those things administratively make it a challenge to to run an election? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the thing that um, you brought up on March the March two thousand sixteen is very telling yeah. to that point. Mm -hmm. You had fifty two percent of the voters show up and vote in the primary, mm -hmm. but. Only 34% actually, it w at the same moment in time, mm -hmm. with the ballot in their hand, mm -hmm. did not vote in the local election. And I mean, think about still, that. Which is still, still higher than double than see, what we usually see yeah. in a, in a yeah. local election with nothing else I, on the list. I, I still just, see that as 20% higher than we average <laughs> for a local yeah. election, so 35 would still be it, it an improvement. Amazing, though, John. Pardon me? It is amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, that. that that fact is stunning to me. But it's, it just, oh, go ahead. Um, I, I, it is stunning, but it's sort of yeah, it's long ago. beside Denver the point because for the con of getting more civic engagement, we e even with those, the number of people not voting in the, in the local elections during the primary, we, e we get, we still get a lot more voters, 34% or something like that. Than the, the the past local elections where where there's been no. Um, it was 18 this past April. Yeah, it was I think 17 the year before. So. So do we have any more questions for Laura before? Because we're running a little behind, and we we have some lovely people here who want to talk to us about the town forest. So I do have a question. So um, other communities are going to face the same issue. Do you have any feel as to what's happening in some other communities? So the majority of them don't combine. There's some that do on a regular basis. Concord does. Um, I have not put out a feel as to what they're doing this year. I, I could do that and get see if I can get some feedback from some of the other clerks. And I'd be interested in that information because yeah. if sure. all the towns are doing that, and everyone's on the primary, then there's going to be a universal <laughs> shortage for staff. Right. If it's if we're mm. one, if we're an anomaly, then yeah. we can pilfer from other towns for that series mm. of days. But that would be a that would be a factor for me. Right. If we can't find if nobody can find enough staff, then we all have a problem. Right. Yeah, I'll put that message out there and see. I know that some of them, like for example, North Reading does not, but they hold their election in May, so it's you yeah. know too far right. away to try yeah. and combine it. Um, and it, you know, some some of them have said that they don't like to again because of staff. But you know, I'll put the word out there and see who who com who's planning on combining. It. Yeah, okay. generally speaking, our local election is early compared to almost every other community around. So, okay. I have one last qu quick question on the cost savings. Mm -hmm. um, so, if we combine them, you said we'd save something like seven thousand dollars. Somewhere between yeah, around nine thousand. Nine thousand, and then. Plus, we would do early voting for both elections if, if. if we end up having early voting for the primary. If we're not I'm, to be honest with you. I am not going to know oh. whether or not we're going to have early voting in for March primary until probably February. Huh. Okay, so February so or February. So if in any December. case, we're making a budget correction. Is that correct, Laura? In, if we're having early voting, no matter what, though. I mean, we're not, we're not, not necessarily. If we well, combine it, it's only about a thousand dollars off. And I can. The point is, the budget that went in did not didn't anticipate early voting, but the state does give you a grant for that, so it's really hard to say. Okay. Okay. So we could so be nine thousand plus something if they do. It. Okay. Thanks. So if it's not a question for Laura, we're not talking about it. Yeah, why don't we table it? Because we do have people that are because I, I have a, I have a lot to talk I, about. I have, on this, on I have this a lot of questions lot. too. That so that's why I'd like to put this on a on a future agenda and, and give a little bit more allowance. Otherwise, we're going to have okay. some. Just one quick question: as, as you're polling some of the other clerks, are there communities that have other experience with early voting already, yes. other than the one we just did? It strikes me that that is going to be a very positive phenomenon going forward, that many more people are going to take advantage of it as compared to, let's say, absentee voting. And we get, we're going to get more people voting in total as a result. And if you get more people voting early, it may impact this issue of, of overload. People can have more time to, to do it, not going into the pressure of the, of the field house. So I think it's going to change the dynamic. I'm wondering if we can just ask that question as part of your 
your discussion. Um, it doesn't change your requirements, though. No, it doesn't change the requirements. It's more just trying to understand a little bit of right. kind of where early voting may be heading. Um, I can put that in there, just but just so you're aware, there is a the Secretary of Commonwealth um, has a, a page on their website that shows the total number of early voters that mm -hmm. voted in 2012. I'm sorry, 2016 and 2018, um, and it shows that that did not increase turnout, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, so that was for 2016. 2018, it showed a slight increase in turnout. So as time goes on, yeah, yeah right. but um, thank you. Yeah, but I can get that too. So Laura, thank you very much. Um, Bob, let's coordinate and find another date when the yep. five of us can all, even if it's an off okay. scheduled meeting. All right. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, next up, we have, uh, we'll be hearing from the Town Forest Committee. They've been making plans for a forest thinning project. Hi, uh, good evening. I'm, I'm Bill Sullivan. I'm the chair of the Town Forest Committee, and I'm joined by Adam Fitz, for Hebrew, my floor, and you can answer that question. So, uh, thank you for the opportunity to come in. We wanted to talk to you about a program that we're looking at in the Town Forest to improve the health of the Town Forest. Uh, we wanted to, you know, make you aware of it. We haven't really rolled it out to the public yet, so we wanted to talk with you about it first so that, you know, you're aware of what's going on and make it some attention. So. Uh, so the uh, first, I have some photographs first to kind of just sort of set the stage of what's happening in the town forest. Uh, there are certain areas, and this is the council ring, if you're familiar with that. Uh, there are a number of dead trees here. This council ring is used by a lot of different folks, the scouts, the uh, Reading Wreck, and, and others. And this is becoming kind of, it's becoming a safety hazard. When the wind blows and these things are, you know, working in the breeze, it's, it's just not a safe condition. Uh, Slide. The next slide, there's a number of areas in the town forest where the only parts of the trees that have pine needles on them are up to the crowns. So you can kind of see them here, these circles here. That's, those are the crowns of the trees. And it used to be, you know, Kurt has talked about when he was a young kid, these pine trees would have needles pretty much all the way up. But the problem is that because it was planted as a, a lot of these trees were planted as a plantation starting in the 1930s, and over the decades, they were harvested and their wood was used by town residents. And that harvesting hasn't happened in a long time. So consequently, uh, the, um, the, uh, we're getting into a kind of monoculture. Uh, this, you know, this looks more like a cornfield than a forest, doesn't it? Because the trees are so close together. It's not really what a, a, a natural forest looks like. They're pretty you know, uniform sizes and you know, very dense. And that's, that's creating a problem. Uh, we also have an uh, invasion of uh, uh, buckthorns. It's, uh, it's an invasive species that has really taken hold in the town forest. And so part of what we're looking at are ways that we can uh, kind of stem the tide a little bit. So a forest management plan was prepared in 2010. And that plan talked about all ages management, which is there are three age classes. There are seedlings and saplings, the poles is a four to nine inch diameter, and then the larger, more mature tree. And a healthy forest has all three of these, the, 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 all the other ages. Uh, as I mentioned, the town forest planted in the 30s in dense rows, are primarily pine trees, then periodically harvested. Uh, so the result is that in certain areas of the town forest, not all of it, there are some areas that aren't, but the ones that have, are of greatest concern is where this monoculture has been established and it's very dense. Uh, it makes the trees vulnerable to environmental stresses like droughts, disease. Uh, the red pine, have a, it, uh, there's a red pine scale that is really doing a lot of damage to the trees and is susceptible to insects and fire. So at the time, in 2010, uh, the plan recommended selective tree removal to better balance the age and the size class. And so that's what, uh, that's what we're working on now. So our current efforts, we've retained a certified forester that is, advised, is advising us on how to go about doing, not, um, approach, not attacking the entire town forest, but on a smaller pilot scale. We want to demonstrate that it works and that people will be more comfortable with that. You know, if we try it first in a relatively small area, 
and uh, the, the purpose being to open up the canopy. Because remember that picture with that, where they were so tight together. The, the sunlight doesn't get to, to the understory, so the saplings that are there, but they can't grow without light. And so by taking some of those, the thinning out the, the, the really dense areas, allow them to get in, and then the saplings will grow, and then you're going to get the blend of the, you know, the smaller trees and, and the larger trees. Uh, I've got another figure that shows it, more blow up of that that I'll get into, but it's about six areas. There are different methods for doing this work. Uh, one is uh, you know, chainsaws that are a little more, more mechanized. That's kind of to be determined the time of year. So likely, uh, likely be in the fall, we want it to be dry. Uh, we had a site visit with the Conservation Commission, so we've already explored that aspect of the environmental protections of the work. And uh, then we'll also be looking at you know, the, the optimal time to do the buck going thinning and the removal, which will be likely separate from when we have a logger come in to do the main work. So it's the, the area is a little hard to see on this. The, uh, the, the council ring is, is right here. So there's about a 200 foot radius. This one says is more as much for safety as it is for improving because it is kind of an active area. I have a lot of kids there. A lot of kids there. All exactly. the time. That's right. And so because it is so such so trafficked. Um, it's a little bit different. <coughs> thinning that out, we may not be able to get the saplings to grow where the people are. That's why. You know, the, the purpose of the council ring is, you know, even from when it was established, isn't just for the forest, but it's for people to enjoy. And so this, this area, the council ring area, is more for safety. This other area, that's really a, the area that we're looking at to improve the health of the trees so that we can thin it out and allow more light in and get more, more uh, uh, trees to, to, to grow. Uh, it's a very good area in terms of access because it's right along this, this dirt road here. So the equipment can get in you know, with minimal uh, disruption and then do the thing and, and be gone. Uh, so the next slide. So the next steps would be we need to recognize that we need to you know, get this message out to the public, uh, prepare bid documents. And that would be we would have our forest to prepare the scope of work, identify which trees and actually tag those trees, the ones that would be the ones that would be candidates for removal. Uh, go through the permitting process, we have to get a permit for the state forester with the Conservation Commission, and then put out uh, the, the contract for bid. Uh, a big question, obviously, and probably going through all your minds, is how much is it going to cost? That, our forester really can't say because the price of wood, the value of the wood, is volatile. Uh, it's, it depends on what's happening. There's lately the, the little pellets that are used to be used for wood stoves aren't just economically viable anymore because the price of gas is so low. So there are a lot of factors that go into how much value will the trees have. A dead tree has no value. So you know, delaying this process until those trees that have the little few pine needles up at the top until they're dead, it's only going to make it worse. It's going to cost more in the future than it will now. So the idea would be to put this out to bid, see what it's going to cost, and then we can make an educated decision about how we'll be funded. Next slide. So again, why we wanted to come speak with you is to kind of get your input on concerns you might have as we go forward. You know, speaking with the public about this, what things you suggest that we emphasize, or you know, however we can best do this so we can get the work done and, and uh, keep people as happy as we possibly can. Wonderful. Bill, thank you for the presentation and, and thank you for taking the initiative with us. It's a, a treasure that we have in town. Yes, it so, is. So um, we want to do everything we can to maintain it. I'll open it up and see if the board has any questions. I, I've heard this before. I, I think it's a great plan and I think you've presented it in a way that it is, um, is a good pitch, if you will. I mean, I think you, I wouldn't change your presentation at all. I think it, it really hits home the points that need to be um, made. One quick point. I think that um, in your closing, when you talked about safety, yes. I actually think that's very important to emphasize perhaps a little bit more okay. that um, there are issues, there, there are risks and they increase as time marches on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not that we're deforesting, it's in fact we're improving, mm -hmm. making it healthier, 
improving the safety. Yes. I was there when the, they had the, the turkey roast in November. It was a particularly windy day. Scary. And it was. It really Scary. Was. And so that's that's really what. Yeah. Started. I mean, you know, when you have 40, 50 kids running around and parents mm -hmm. visit, like that event, you know, I mean, the. You know, yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, one, you know, one unit will bring 40, 50, 60 people, and then, mm -hmm. and before you know it, parents, grandparents, I mean, it turns into a big thing. And when you have that kind of wind condition, it's. I just think, Billy, you guys have done a really good job, and I mean, that presentation is concise and it's clear. I, I would agree with Mark that, you know, I, I would accent the. Uh, the amount of use that area where all those dead trees are because yeah. it's something that you know has been on my mind for actually a long time because i've been in and out of there and you know the facts are i mean it's our town forest um if you're a forest person as i know most everybody is on the committee it doesn't look like a forest um and it never really has because it was created you know rather than and so by taking the steps you guys are talking about i think it has the opportunity to become a forest you know, for the future, which I think is awesome. I think you guys are doing a great job here. I have a oh, question. Yeah. Um, I knew you proposed different sort of steps and aspects, but how long is the town forest or portions taken offline? And I would suppose, as opposed to yes, it's a good idea, or no, it's a bad idea. It's going to be when when's the optimal time mm -hmm. compared to the use of the town forest, and, and when is that not available? You might run into that. In, in terms of being able to get to those particular areas? Right. In, in terms of, you know, gee, we have our whatever bonfire. Right, right, right. You know, in October, so mm -hmm. please don't do it that. I imagine you're going to run into the logistical questions that I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with, the use of the town force. Yes, yes. Yeah, the work would take it'd take a couple of weeks to two or three weeks to get to get the work done. So, okay. yeah, we would definitely be the issue aware of, of uh, you know, when people are planning to use it. And also, but the, then balancing, you know, when it's dry, if we can't go in, we couldn't, couldn't go in this spring. Right. It would have been a disaster. Yes. Um, and so that's a, that was pretty good consideration. But the scouts have been, we actually were only thinking about doing, we weren't thinking about the doing the council ring area first because we thought it would be so controversial that, you know, we thought we would try another area that might be a little safer. But they came to us and said, especially after that, yeah. summer, that situation, you know, we're really concerned about this, mm -hmm. so that's why we added it. Are there efforts going to be made to do replanting as well, or are you going to do the thinning and then just sort of allow it to grow up? Our forester said that this this year happens to be a particularly good year for pine cones, and so when they when they pop, then the seeds will be there, and so if we can thin, then come spring, the sun gets to them, and so there is not a plan to they will it will naturally reseed. Wow! And the white pines would predominate. Or you just get a mix of white and red. The, the the goal would be to eventually eliminate the red pines. Our forester said that they are really more of a northern species. Yeah. And especially as climate changes, yeah. uh, that it's only going to make it, it's only going to get worse for them. And so um, you know the goal would be to have more white pines and fewer red pines. Okay. And oh, just a, a logistical question for Bob and. Um, as far as I know we have volunteers that build, go out and build trails and save a lot of money I'm assuming that there's a lot of people in town who know how to use chainsaw <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that would be way too high of a risk to oh, I, I was wondering if some eagles got to send them to them get them. Oh, <laughs> um, no but but <laughs> Yeah. Sure the liability issue would, would be a problem. I, I, would, I would sign, I'd be happy to sign a waiver. Um, <laughs> Talk to Chris. Okay. Um, do it. Yeah, but no, I, I, obviously that's not. Uh, um, but along but, that but line, for the, the buckthorn buck thorn removal, mm -hmm. could we have some buckthorn removal days? Yes. With volunteers, Bob, would that present any happy to try to figure out how but I've already discussed that with the scouts and okay. they are interested in that. so you know obviously there's mm. more here than could yeah. be done by right. even all the troops that are left in the town but yeah. to start the process to, you know for the awareness yeah. we can certainly and it would be good to especially focus on the areas where we're thinning because we want to be sure that what comes up are white pines and not white form the Girl Scouts might be interested in it as well yes 
and the red pines that come up, you could just uh, stuff all. <laughs> well, you could just lop. You know, you can just before they get to any great size, you could just. Yeah. So, I think my last question for you is, um, what? How can we support this effort as the board? I think when when the bid the bids come in, you know, they'll come back. And uh -huh. we'll, uh, we'll see. All right. I mean, uh, direct. You know, I think <laughs> the, the best case. Our forester said the best case that this will be re revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Best case. So it's, it will likely cost something, especially if we were to just do not the count the, the council ring area because that will have a number of dead trees of little to no value. Mm -hmm. That will be a, a net cost okay. if it were by itself. But that could be balanced, uh, counterbalanced by some revenue that would be gained by uh, thinning out the other areas where the trees are alive. Okay. Great. Quickly, order of magnitude inside of, you said it's about six acres. Are we talking thousands or hundreds? What's the order of magnitude of, of number trees? of trees? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. I, I, I point of, yeah. Yeah. Hundreds. Hundreds. Okay. Point of asking was, is this hundreds? Hundreds is probably. You said hundreds on this side. They planted over 100,000 trees. I don't know, six acres. Six acres. Oh, but I mean, it's a, it's a lot of trees. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it a, a big enough scale that, that you'd be looking for a, a large scale company to, to be pulling it away as opposed to a more local? I'm just. In your thinking and in the bidding, I'm sure it'll be discussed. And that'll come up in the, in the bidding. Our foresters will be reaching out to, he's already started to reach out to various loggers to see, you know, gauge their interest. Right. And, you know, we want to put in protections, as I said in the beginning, about, you know, the environmental protections for the Conservation Commission. We want to make sure that it's done. We don't want someone that this will be done, like some places up, up in Maine or something, where there's a little bit less concern about how it might all look. You can just Clear. level it and click. Yeah. We're not going to do that. You know, we won't be taking uh, protective measures so that, you know, it's, it, the first year it's going to look a little rough. But, you know, we have to think in the long term about, you know, 10, 20, you know, 40 years from now, what's it going to look like? And after a couple of years, if some of the broken branches that will be there on the ground once this is done, that will actually be good for the, for the ground mm -hmm. because that will break down and nutrients will get into, into the ground. Can you... Oh. Can you leave, the, speaking of which, can you leave, can you drop the dead pines and just leave them to rot? It's possible. Um, that may not be very popular, and so we weren't expecting to do that. A wood pile for campfires would be very good right in it, that spot. It, it would. It yeah, would. I think and that's the, the move. Right, and it will also add carbon back into the, into the forest and provide homes for I, I think from a from a, an environmental standpoint you're yeah. probably exactly right yeah. it probably would be the best thing but you know I think we would maybe need to counterbalance that with the public perception of what has happened to the town park and I imagine the fire hazards of having a whole bunch yeah. of down dead trees yeah. well, just quickly as you're thinking about the presentation to the public I'm wondering if there's a possibility to think about where the dog walking activities mm -hmm. could take place mm -hmm. while this activity is happening. Mm -hmm. There are some safe areas. Great. It, just in terms of the presentation, sure, sure. to no, emphasize that might can, might gain some forward. support. Plenty, plenty, plenty of room. Mm -hmm. For the activity. Yeah, along the same lines, police will be involved with how to safely do this and transport logs away. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for, for coming out to us tonight and for presenting, and let us know how else we can help. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Why don't we take a five-minute break, um, and then we will pick up with appointing the uh, volunteers to the boards and committees.
All right, so next on the agenda, we have appointing, oh, and the room has cleared, uh, appointing volunteers to boards and committees. Andy and I comprised the volunteer appointment subcommittee, the VASC. We interviewed almost 40 people. Wow. We are reappointing or appointing for the first time um, over 45 individuals. So for the most part, the process is pretty straightforward. We have one applicant or one returning volunteer for one position. Um, there were a few instances where there was multiple applicants for a limited number of positions. So my thought process on how we can make our way through this, since we do have to read each appointment motion one at a time, um, is that if there was no discussion between Mandy and myself because there was no um, applicants for consideration, there was just one, we can go straight through um, and I will highlight those where there were multiple applicants for a limited number of roles. All right? Great. All right. So we will start with animal control appeals. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member John Miles to the Animal Control Appeals Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Thank you. All those, so this one there was only one applicant for one um, position. So there, I imagine there's no discussion. All those in favor? And we still have a vacancy there, right? Yeah, so the, we have numerous vacancies. It's for an associate. It's for an associate position. We have numerous vacancies. The plan here is that once we appoint all these individuals, I've asked Caitlin to provide the updated list at our next meeting. Great. And we'll announce all the vacancies, full and associate positions at that time. Great. Right. Next up, we have the Board of Assessors. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Brendan Zarekian to the Board of Assessors for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Great. So the Board of Firmatory Trustees, we had uh, a newcomer, Brian Boyle. He had, in, had expressed interest in a few different ones, but cemetery was his first choice, and there is a vacancy for a, a full member. So Andy and I did recommend him for that role. Um, would you like me to read all three before stopping or just one at a time? Why don't you go ahead and read all three? Great. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Caitlin Salmon to the Board of Cemetery Trustees for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Ronald Stortz to the Board of Cemetery Trustees for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board appoint Brian Boyle as a full member to the Board of Cemetery Trustees for a one-year term expiring June 30, 2020. Second. Okay. Um, we will take the votes one at a time because I think we have no... From a procedural perspective, I'm missing Dan. Right, um, yeah. You should do them now. I should do them one time. All right. Uh, all those in favor... What order? Caitlin Salmon Caitlin is first. Salmon. Uh, all those in favor of Caitlin Salmon? Okay. All those in favor of Ronald Stortz? All those in favor of Brian Boyle? Great. All right. Uh, Board of Health, we had one reappointment and one new member for an associate position. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Eleanor Shankoff to the Board of Health for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Also move that the select board appoint Anne-Marie Messina as an associate member to the Board of Health for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Eleanor Shunkoff? All those in favor of Anne-Marie Messina? Good. Board of Registrars. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member <coughs> Chrisandra Holmes to the Board of Registrars for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Climate advisory, we had a few different things happening here. So the first is that we have an associate member, Jeffrey Everson, who's currently, uh, he's an associate member and we, he would like to fill the, one of the vacancies for a full membership position. Um, then we have two new applicants, Patricia Cameron and Peter McGowan, um, and one for the full and one for the associate position. And Andy and I, as part of the VASC, recommended 
Patricia Cameron uh, for the full member position and Peter McGowan for the associate member position. Is Peter uh, just a, a question? Mm -hmm. He lists number one as, as, as the housing authority. Is he also being proposed over there? So the housing authority, there's certain rules that they have to um, to be on the board, and the housing authorities um, found a member and recommended someone for their board. So he, Peter McGowan, um, said that he wa just wanted to get involved, which is why he listed oh. a bunch of. Okay. So he was happy just going anywhere. Good. Um, mm -hmm. Where the housing authority had someone that they were recommending because she lives where in the community that they need to live in. Um, Got it. Mm -hmm. What happened there? Yeah, I just want to, I mean, because he'd listed another one as the number one, I just didn't want to stick him with his number two choice. Can I explain that to me? Totally yeah, fine. that sounds yeah. good. Thank you for that, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. All right, so Make any further motion. discussion on that before we move to the motions? No, not a motion. We got to. Yep, to me. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Move that the select board appoint incumbent associate member Jeffrey Everson as a full member of the Climate Advisory Committee for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board appoint Patricia Cameron as a full member of the Climate Advisory Committee for a two year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. And move that the select board appoint Peter McGowan as an associate member of the Climate Advisory Committee for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Jeffrey Everson? All those in favor of Patricia Cameron? All those in favor, favor of Peter McGowan? Great. Commissioner of Trustments? Move that the select board reappoint incumbent <coughs> member John Daly to the Commissioners of Trust Funds for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. okay. So for CPDC, we had two individuals who are interested in it. However, there are no vacancies. We have three, uh, two full members and one associate member who are seeking reappointment, and Andy and I agreed to continue their service. That's your recommendation to to, to, to keep to John Weston uh, to retain John Weston, um, Nick Spina, and Tony um, D'Adrezzo. Okay. Dear Reza. Dear Reza. Thank you. So, unless there's further discussion, okay. Mark? Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member John Weston to the CPDC for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent <coughs> member Nicholas Safina to the CPDC for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board reappoint incumbent associate member Tony DeRezzo to the CPDC for a two year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of John Weston? All those in favor of Nicholas Safina? All those in favor of Tony DeRezzo? I'm maturing that. Thank you. All right. Conservation. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Annika Scanlon to the Conservation Commission for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board reappoint incumbent member David Pinette to the Conservation Commission for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor of Annika Scanlon? All those in favor of David Pinette? Move that the select board appoint Anthony Lalacata as a constable for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Council on Aging had um, three uh, full members seeking reappointment and one associate member seeking to fill a full member vacancy. Um, so Andy and I were in agreement that the associate member, Sally Hoyt, should be moved into a full member position, and a new applicant, um, Karen Panetti, Panette, thank you, um, would fill one of the associate positions. Did Sa um, Sally actually came in and asked to? Yes. Okay. Multiple times. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. I'm going to read all five. For a second, okay. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Brian Snell to the Council on Aging for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. 
Because he, he's not showing in the yeah, code it's here. It's just not green. Yeah, the it's a little off on here, but he was. Okay, uh, got it. Highlight him. But. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Deborah Small to the Council on Aging for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Joan Coco to the Council on Aging for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board appoint incumbent associate member Sally Hoyt as a full member of the Council on Aging for a one year term expiring June 30, 2020. Second. And move that the select board appoint Karen Panette as an associate member of the Council on Aging for a two year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Brian Snow. All those in favor of Deborah Small. All those in favor of Joan Coco. All those in favor of Sally Hoyt. All those in favor of Karen Panette. Great. Cultural Council. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member. Nora Bucko to the Cultural Council for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. We also have Catherine Lopez, um, Natalie, as an associate. So move that the select board appoint Catherine Lopez, Natalie, okay. Natalie, as an associate member of the Cultural Council for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Nora Bucko. All those in favor of Catherine Lopez, Natalie. Okay. Custodian and soldiers and uh, sailors and soldiers graves. Move that the select board appoint Raymond Boyd as the custodian of sailors and soldiers graves for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Second. All those in favor? The Historic District Commission. Um, we had a gentleman who was interested in both the Historic District Commission as well as the Historical Commission. However, as there are no vacancies on the Historical Commission, um, we he was amenable to being on the Historic District Commission, and that's Carl Midnight. We also have three, two full and one associate members returning. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Everett Blodgett to the Historic District Commission for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Greg Maganzini to the Historic District Commission for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent associate member Pino Durazio to the Historic District Commission for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. And move that the select board appoint Carl Midnight as an associate member of the Historic District Commission for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Everett Blodgett. All those in favor of Greg Mag Magazzini. Magazzini. Thank Magazzini. you, Magazzini. So apologies, Greg. Uh, all those in favor of Pino Drazio. And all those in favor of Carl Midnight. I'm just going to apologize here for everyone's name. I make a mistake on uh, Historical no, Commission is pretty straightforward. Three reappointments. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Jack Williams to the Historical Commission for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Jonathan Barnes to the Historical Commission for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board reappoint incumbent associate member Amelia Friedman to the Historical Commission for a two year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Jack Williams? All those in favor of Jonathan Barnes? All those in favor of Amelia Friedman. So now we go on to the Housing Authority. This is where we had three individuals who were interested. However, due to the um, requirements that Caitlin mentioned earlier, we recommended Marie Hansen, who is in fact a resident of one of these units. And we have a returning um, full member as well. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Timothy Kelly to the Housing Authority for a five-year term expiring June 30, 2024. Second. And move that the select board appoint Marie Hansen as a member of the Housing Authority for a four-year term expiring June 30, 2023. Second. Uh, all those in favor of Timothy Kelly? All those in favor of Marie Hansen? Okay. Atra? Move that select the select board reappoint incumbent member Kerry Riley to the Human Relations Advisory Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor? All right, RCTV board directors, we have one returning. 
move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Chris Cridler to the RCTV Board of Directors for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, we're on for recreation. Caitlin, did we get an answer? Or we decided to have Michael Coltman move from associate to fall. Was that the verdict? We yes. Okay. I think that's what your motion says? Yes. It does. It does. Excellent. Okay. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Eric Gaffin to the Recreation Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Michael DiPietro to the Recreation Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board appoint incumbent associate member Michael Coltman as a full member to the Recreation Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor of Eric Gaffin? All those in favor of Michael DiPietro? All those in favor of Michael Coltman? Town Forest. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Thomas Gardner to the Town Forest Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member William Sullivan to the Town Forest Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board reappoint incumbent associate member Nancy Doctor to the Town Forest Committee for a two-year term expiring June 30, 2021. Second. All those in favor of Thomas Gardner? All those in favor of William Sullivan? All those in favor of Nancy Doctor. Home stretch, folks. Trails. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member David Williams to the Trails Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. And move that the select board reappoint incumbent member Kathy Kelly to the Trails Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. All those in favor of David Williams? All those in favor of Kathy Kelly? CBA. So, so we had two applicants that were interested in CPDC and ZBA. Um, we have currently one vacancy for an associate position. There may be additional changes on that on this particular board going forward, but they're not official yet. So as of right now, we only have the one vacancy. Um, one of the applicants, Andrew McLaughlin, is also interested in the Finance Committee and will be interviewed by the Finance Committee Appointment Board? Committee? Committee. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, due to that interest in the fact that FinCom has three vacancies currently, um, the, my, you know, Andy and my suggestion was to, a recommendation is to appoint Hillary Mativ um, for the associate position on ZBA and keep Andrew McLaughlin under consideration for FinCom. Now, granted, this board doesn't weigh in on FinCom, but... Well, you do. But I do, yeah. Um. Along with Alan, um, the town moderator, and the chair of the Finance Committee. Right. So, um, how many candidates for FinCom? Seven. 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 And is that closed now? Uh, no, it could, they could keep coming if they yeah. wanted to. But so they're up to seven down. for three spots. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not as though they don't have plenty. Yeah. Um, and he ranks FinCom as his last of, of the things he was interested in. Yeah. Um, and ZBA second. So I guess my only question is, when you looked at the qualifications, I, I mean, I think the idea that they're an opinion is that the fact that he's a candidate for, for FinCom is is sort of secondary here. I mean, it's the, his last choice, and there's seven candidates yeah. mm -hmm. um, for three spots. Um, when you looked at the two resumes, can you can you the two of you share a little bit about these two people? So they're actually fairly evenly matched. She's an architect, and he is in development. So um, from that perspective, they're pretty well balanced. Um, she only had the two, um, so that was our thought process. And he did say he was interested in, in he he did. serving FinCom. When we he wanted to serve the town. Yeah, well, I'm assuming I, all seven of them are. <laughs> so you know, our, otherwise, why would they be applying? When we spoke to him, um, he did express his interest with CPDC, ZBA, and Historical. At the time, ZBA only had the one vacancy, and officially, technically, only has the one. Um, and he did express interest, uh, interest in FinCom because he has a lot of experience with budgeting. 
So that was the thought process there. Well, I, you know, I guess the, the, the big question is which of the two do you guys think is, let's put all that, you know, machinations of who's mm -hmm. going where to what thing because they like this first or seventh and we got seven candidates mm -hmm. for three spots. I mean, I think we got to put that over here. In your opinion, which of the two candidates is, I didn't see the resumes and we don't have them here. Yeah. So I'm, I guess what I'm asking, let's put all that aside for a second. Mm -hmm. How do you see the resumes? I mean, I think they're both equally qualified, honestly. Um, there, there's really not much more to say there. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to chime in anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I slightly leaned, I leaned slightly towards Hillary. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think um, she is going to business on her own to do architectural work and she said she could be flexible on time, which is critical. Yeah, that's nice. And um, because she would be running her own business and would be willing to step up to a full-time position if that was necessary. Okay. So. Bob? Uh, just to remind the board, the board doesn't need to make all the appointments tonight. It's not a rule about that. Sure. You could wait. Uh, you know, you do have three possible uh, vacancies or opportunities on this board, but all three don't have to be filled. Yeah, and officially, we only technically we only have a one now. You have two candidates looking to be reappointed, so you can, uh, oh, I certainly see, yeah. encourage you to get a full member on there yeah. as quickly. So, do we think you mentioned something, uh, Vanessa, that there might be some other movement that's possible? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I might. I, I think I would suggest. I'm not going to make it in the form of a vote. I'm just going to suggest that maybe we sit on this one for a, for a meeting cycle and see what happens because we might be able to point both. Yeah. I mean we don't mm -hmm. know yes I absolutely agree and my inclination would be given the critical nature of the ZBA my inclination would be we believe that there's going to be movement anyway um, I would prefer to seat someone now to get them acclimated um, and then should something else change um, then reconsider it at that point okay yeah I, I, because we can always yeah, you know you gauge their it. interest yeah. later so your suggestion is to seat three of them now and if, if right. there's some movement then the and, and we're interviewing for fincom next week no. well would it could we could we uh, could we hold a point two now and then hold on the final appointment until the next CBA meets tomorrow. Yeah. But these terms don't expire until June 30th. So all these members, are, the current members, are still sitting on this board until yes. June 30th. Mm -hmm. And your next meeting is June 25th. Yeah. Yep. The only one would be the associate member. Oh, I guess to gain. To gain her, to have her seated tomorrow. She'd have to come and get sworn, or he or she, whoever, would have to come in tomorrow before the meeting gets sworn in and able to participate. OK. okay. Yeah, I mean, so, that yeah. was our thought process, is, is to get somebody seated and um, mm -hmm. already coming up to speed. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me ask you a complicated question. I, um, your, your name, when you do a motion, the terms are the ending date. What is the technical starting date? Because to me, it's not June. It's July 1st. Okay. For an associate. It's not going to start anyway. Even if it's a vacancy that they're filling? Um, mm -hmm. You'd have to appoint them to the balance of the term, which runs through First, June, right. and then to a two-year. And the motions so far have been to a two-year term, which I assume means mm -hmm. starting July 1st. So you whoever, can both, yeah. just to be clear. Yeah, so whoever I mean, gets appointed doesn't really take office until right. July 1st of 2019. Yes. That's, that's always been the way the board has operated. Yes. Past, yeah. But not to say you shouldn't do two motions in this instance so someone can start sooner. I mean, my, my inclination is still to move forward with it. I, I hesitate to put off, especially considering we know that there's a high likelihood of further movement on this board. I'd like to sort of confirm people sooner rather than later. Um, you guys did a lot of work. I'm not going to 
I mean, I, I, I tend to look at it a little differently, but I'm not going to disagree with you. You guys put an enormous amount of time into putting 40 people here. And if that's the pleasure of the vast committee, then I'm not going to object to it. Could we possibly suggest that the, the fourth candidate uh, might want to attend the meeting just as an attendee in any event? Okay. I had planned to reach out to him because I the think way that would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because I think he's very qualified to serve on any of these, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want him to think. Um, uh, that's what I, I didn't want to that send a fence. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So my intention was to sort of just you know, it, we as the VASC had our recommendation. I, I didn't want to preempt that the full board vote by reaching out to him prematurely, but I did want to reach out to him and say, please know we'd love for you to join us in a capacity. It's just. Timing and space is what it is, but um, the music hasn't stopped yet. They're still looking for chairs. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's yeah. Yeah. Um, it, so. The fact that you're going to call them, I think, is yeah. If big. It, if that that's, makes me feel better about yes following the you know the recommendation. If it, yeah, if that's and I, your preference. I, I think my instinct, first instinct, was similar to John's to just hold that last appointment until our next meeting when we would have more information about the FinCom recommendations as well, so we could kind of, and possible movement on CBA, so we could kind of see where there might be a place for um, all qualified applicants or as many as possible, but um, if you're going to be having that conversation. I, yeah, I was gonna reach out to him. Okay. Yeah. I kind of didn't want that to bias the board, but yes, I <laughs> it's a good bite. Yeah. Um, okay, so do we have motions? Yes. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent member John Jerima to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a three year term expiring June 30, 2022. Second. Move that the select board reappoint incumbent associate member Kyle Torno to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a one year term expiring June 30, 2020. Second. And move that the select board appoint Hillary Mativ as an associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a one year term expiring June 30, 2020. Second. We, uh, we need to do another motion there, right? Well, and, that, and then if you want her to start tomorrow, right. mm -hmm. you should just indicate effective tomorrow through that state. Let me restate that motion okay. if I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, first two stand, the third. Move that the select board appoint Hillary Mativ as an associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term beginning June 5th, June 5th 2019, uh, for a term expiring June 30, 2020. Second. All those in favor of John Torino? All those in favor of Kyle Torno? All those in, Hil uh, in favor of Hillary Mativ? Great. Whew. Okay. None of us should reach yeah. out. Yes, and so, um, do you also, do you want to reach out to Hillary and tell her there's yeah. a meeting tomorrow? Do you want me to do that? Because um, if she plans on going to the meeting, she needs to see you are and get sworn in. Why don't you reach out to her and, yeah, thank you. All right. They just want I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of the applicants um, and volunteers. It's it's really encouraging to see so much involvement and commitment on on behalf of our community. And thank you so much to Vanessa and Andy for for 40 interviews. That's significant. So thank you for your time and okay. and going through that. Th thank you, and for that I was remiss. Um, and I, I also wanted to add. So last year it was two years ago. The board decided to. Bring in um, incumbents mm -hmm. to be interviewed, um, and I was—I'll I'll admit—I was a little hesitant on on the process. Um, but I have to say, it has been a wonderful opportunity to connect with all the volunteers, to chat with them informally. Andy and I had the privilege of, of speaking with a couple of the forest committee members who were returning to us and hear about their thinning project um, and other sort of issues, concerns, sort of heads up of things that were coming. So I, I found it to be a wonderful process and I it made me, um, you know, I know how hard the volunteers work and it really made me appreciate that much more of what they do for our town. So for all of you out there, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the original plan, just to be clear, was for that to happen. Yes. In other words, when the board made a decision a couple of years ago mm -hmm. to say, once every three years, Let's have a chat. And a lot of them came in, and all of them were incredibly enthusiastic about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. That's, awesome. great. Yeah. Yep. That's, That's great. That's awesome. great. I have a lot of notes that I'll be sending to Bob with questions. So. 
Okay. As a yeah. result of that. <laughs> By the way, I think all thinning projects are good other than here. <laughs> well, okay. you this, had is to a, go this is really this is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is excellent. And Thank I, you, know, Jackie, for that list. You know, when it gets all cold, when you, you know, when you, when you change the colors and yeah. you know yeah. pop the vacancies up and all yeah. that, that's going to be a valuable yeah. tool for us to yeah. just carry around and recruit with. To be honest with you, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when we redo the list tomorrow after just filling in all the people you appointed tonight how there are not a ton of vacancies. No, there's a few. Yeah. The beauty of it is this list isolates them so you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, we want to Most of them are associate positions. Mm. Yeah. 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 A lot of full memberships are mm. full. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great to get some associates though on board. Because well, we, we had two or three associates who opted for yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's exactly it. You want to you want to see the bench. So we're going to move on now to a discussion on the role of the select board liaisons. Um, there's been questions as to what exactly the role of the liaison is and what duties we have, um, both from a reporting perspective as well as a serving as the liaison. So. I know Bob, thank you for reaching out to, to the various individuals. He's included their perspectives from the boards of committee, um, their associated staff, in the packet. I'm assuming everyone has, has read mm -hmm. through it. Yes. So there's no real structure for this agenda item. It's just a general discussion. So I'll, I'll open it up to what, you know, I think Andy and John, who have served the longest, if you're interested in, in your perspectives first. Um, so I'll just open it up. I'll, I will say, I will note that when Dan and I revised Section 1, some of the Section 1 policies, I'm fairly certain we did not look at 115 liaisons. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so, so people should, you know, I think the board will, should, should read that and decide um, if we want to uh, change into that language. Well, I think there's the official policy, yes. which is always handy, but yeah. then there's also the practical aspect of what we do and how we contribute yeah. and how we report in, um, and if there's an issue, how we either escalate or, or help them escalate it. Yeah. Um, there's the staff relationship side of it, too. So the policy, I think, is helpful from a general perspective, but it doesn't get into the nitty-gritty, nor do I think it should. No. Um, so I think for new members, and this could also be something that could touch on our next agenda, which is the onboarding mm -hmm. yeah. guide. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is one, one point in here that I don't know how many of us do. Um, it's number three, inform town department heads of their interaction with boards and committees for which they have responsibility as described in the table of organization as approved by town meeting as correspondence from a all correspondence from a liaison to a department head will copy town manager I, I don't have any problem with that last sentence um, but uh, as a liaison I focus on the, the board or, or the committee um, and and I let them deal with their Dick town counterpart. I try not to. I mean, we have, an, we have enough on our plate to be, be doing it. So that was just one thing. It, it creates an expectation um, that I think we should consider. I actually like it there. I've been doing it for five years, and I find it to be productive because when I check in with the staff person, you know, I I'll sometimes get some insight as to how the agenda came together and you know I mean, it just kind of so I actually found it very productive over mm -hmm. the course of the last five years to interact with the staff person and you know I always felt like it was a courtesy anyway mm -hmm. um, but it was I found it to be very helpful I, I mean when I looked at these policies I actually thought they were when you think about our policies and think about the fact that as you well know a lot of them had been looked at in 25 yeah. years yeah this one I thought was still very timely and yeah. appropriate uh, the only re response I would the only thought I have on that is um, if it in, if it includes the chair of the board or committee the correspondence um, so there's not a conversation going on between the board or committee 
and the staff, and then another car, another conversation going on between the liaison and the staff. Um, that could could create confusion. I don't, I don't, it's think, not it's, I don't think there's any secrets going on, Andy. N no. I, no, I, I don't think that's the direction he was going, John. Um, I, I think that it could put potentially, so as in the role I've taken as liaison, both when I was on FinCom in, in the past year, um, I've tried to sort of intentionally remove myself from the operational side which meant the involvement with the staff, not from a not wanting to be friendly perspective, but because that way the staff is getting information from one source, and that is the board that they work with. Because there is the potential for conflicting messages or um, confusion if they're hearing from us as the liaison as well as from the boards and committees. And so I view the role of the liaison is to attend as many meetings as possible, which it states, um, provide information, especially from a bureaucratic perspective, because we are in a good position to help with that side of things. Um, but I've also tried to refrain from providing um, my personal opinions on subjects that are before the boards, because you know, we have entrusted these and we have appointed them to make these decisions and I feel that for me as the liaison it is not my job to tell them what to do but simply to assist them in whatever their mission yeah, is. Yeah, actually the policy says that exact thing. So, um, I agree with that. You know, I, I so I, I think when it comes to, you know, and to your point about interacting with the staff, I think it's something that I would suggest we use extreme caution in in our interactions with them because they could we could change the message of what's coming from the town when um, andy and dan were reviewing this section i do remember one discussion with, on this which was uh, bullet point three is not meant to be an in-depth discussion more of a courtesy because i guarantee you department heads do not go to every board and committee meeting they couldn't Mm -hmm. So it's just, by the way, either before or after, it doesn't matter, I'm going or I went to this meeting. That's all. It's not a discussion. And the reason for that, at least historically, was sometimes boards and committees are wondering why you're there if you've never been there before. And it's just a courtesy. Uh, no more, no less. But so that's then, a conversation with the board or committee, right? We, we introduce ourselves, no, say hi. Head. The department head doesn't know why we're there. Because they, they may ask me. Is yeah. there something I need to know? Sometimes boards and committees, it, it, everyone's different. Yeah. Sometimes boards and committees will have a freer discussion with their department head who they interact with on a regular basis rather than you and me. Right. So it's just, it's purely a superficial courtesy, by the way, and obviously it doesn't have to happen every time. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm gonna, it's especially important if you don't usually go to a meeting and you are going because that, you know, at the library trustees, that was an example once where the liaison just didn't go and all of a sudden went for no particular reason other than it was convenient and Amy was asking me, or actually it was Ruth at the time, do you know why so-and-so went? And I said, no, oh, I can ask you. So this is not an in-depth issue. It's yeah. really a superficial courtesy. I mean, I think, you know, one example I can think of as far as interacting with the staff, the department head, is, um, you know, with recreation when we get gifts, you know, something may show up on our agenda. I would reach out um, to the recreation staff as well as the chair of recreation and say, this is on our agenda or this has been asked to put on our agenda, you know, has this gone through the appropriate process and, you know, but it, that is a little bit different from sort of asking the status of things. And it's, it's a nuance, but I think it's an important one. One is keeping them in the loop, and the other is potentially telling them what to do. Yeah. Which I want to make, uh, you know, my, my opinion as far as what the liaison role is, is to stay away from that side of things. Yeah, we deal with the board or committee or commission. Mm -hmm. We don't tell them what to do, yeah. and we report back. And, and I didn't want to blend the the lines. I appreciate, Bob, what you said. I think that can be handled very simply by, if I haven't, um, if I show up to a meeting where people haven't seen a liaison for years, 
I, I tell them who I am, why I'm there, and us, and I say, I'll come to as many meetings as possible as my schedule allows. So that, I think that um, there has to be some level of trust on the staff that, that we are going to pop as we can at these, at these uh, boards and committees and commissions that we're liaison to. Yeah, I don't think there's any issue with trust. It's really just, again, a superficial courtesy. And I remember you, your discussion on point four was to make sure that the relationship was quote-unquote appropriate. That the select board member was not there to manage staff. Okay. So, so given that, <coughs> that it's meant to be kind of a, a pop-up and it's meant to assist with communication, um, one of the things that, that struck me from the list that we all generated is that we can't possibly do a great job at all the ones that we have on the list. Not and maybe, in person. Yeah, not in person. And maybe we're going a little bit in the wrong direction with this. Mm -hmm. In other words, maybe it would make sense to have two or three priorities per person. And with those priorities, to really go out and strongly try to attend the meetings, build a relationship, and the relationship really should be two-way. Sometimes I get concerned that we're there to kind of, you know, come back and say, I went to the meeting and this is what happened. Um, I think it needs to be more of a two-way in terms of, you know, how, how can we be helpful? How can they be helpful to us? And that's less of a reporting and more of a, a relationship. And I think we can have a relationship with, with the people and know to have a conversation as appropriate. But if we had three or four priorities, I actually think we could make a bigger amount of progress in some areas. Mm -hmm. You're talking about number one. Well, I'm kind of looking at the whole thing together. Right, but the number one says, uh, as well as longer term select board goals, those could be our the priorities that you're talking about? Those, in, in fact, could be, yeah. yes. I think the, the goals and also um, if there are particular areas that are of strong interest to us yeah. that we want to be able to come back to the board and reflect. You know, having attended these meetings, mm -hmm. you know, here, this is the discussion, this is where they need help. And that can facilitate what we do in some of those areas. Yeah. I just, this is daunting. And it's not possible to do a credible job with 16 things. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. And I, 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 instead of kind of pretending, sorry, <laughs> I think we might be better off, you know, having a relationship, being responsible to, to know the, the, the appropriate people, attend some meetings. Yeah but to really have a few that each of us want to focus on, that we're assigned to, that we really want to focus on, and right. try to make some progress that way in those things. I think that ends things. up happening sort of by default, because you can't possibly attend all of these meetings. And, and from overlap, that was one of the struggles yeah. that I had this past year. Right. So you have to choose which ones you're going to be a good liaison to and then feel badly because you're neglecting the others. Yeah, it's, some it's of them, sort of inevitable. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but it's... Yeah, some of them are going to meet twice a month. Like the school committee is an example. Yeah, right? school committee so you have that twice a month, you'll have this twice a month, you'll have the 14. more selectmen. I'm going to stay inside the four corners here for a minute. <laughs> How long do you think the meetings would go then? So no. we could ask some of our neighboring yeah, I could be out probably every, with my 14 assignments, I could probably be out every night of the week and still not make all the meetings because they all conflict with yeah. each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, which I think would be an unfair expectation of volunteers to be out for four nights a week. So, every week. So, you know, do we want to take, you know, Mark's approach, which is we are forthcoming with the fact that we're going to choose our top three before in, for whatever we establish them as the priorities and, and the others um, sort of contact us if there's a problem. I mean, that, that feels... Well, it, it could move. So, for example, Bob, you, you're coming here on the MWRA advisory board. So the the, uh, the person basically said, you know, there's no role for Nothing this guy. Nothing to do except the fix. But, <laughs> right. well, yeah. but if this happens, guess what? The game changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I showed up there, and I, I had that role for five years. And after three years, they made me a voting member. Mm -hmm. um, they just did. I mean, that, that was a decision that they made unilaterally. Um, it had nothing to do with the fact that, you know, I was on this board here, I was, but I was a member of that committee and went. Um, you know, I mean, there's interesting stuff that goes on there, but you're right. You can't, you will see because now you're going to be copied 
or I'm sure you already are. Um, you know, you get 10 emails a week from the MWRA. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like five things you can go to. John, a point of clarification, you're a voting member of the MWRA advisor? Not anymore. Not anymore. So does that mean Mark is a voting member of that? No. You only were on it, and, and now you're not? I, I, I'm not I, I don't have any connection there any longer. You're no longer the liaison. Because you're not the liaison. Yeah, and I, they didn't elect me to that position. You know, they did, They invited me to do that because I was coming. Got it. Is what, which they have the right to do. Right. And so now I don't go there anymore. Right. So, <laughs> okay. end of that story. Just wanted to clarify it for the public's sake. Um, okay. No, no, I mean, it had nothing to do with my role here. I happened to coincidentally, you know, have the liaison role, which caused me to start going. I had an interest. I was invited to be a Got member it. of the advisory um, board there as a citizen of Massachusetts, okay, and which I did, and, you know, I'm, now I'm not. Okay. All right. So, so, I'm still a citizen of Massachusetts. So, to pick up, just to give an example, a couple of examples of what I think Mark is saying, some of our subcommittees that we have, for example, capital projects, utilization of Oakland Road combined with capital. Um, Ann and John, or I'm sorry, Vanessa and John, you guys may, if you're liaisons with a board or committee that could help with that, Cap, you know, the, the disposition of uh, Oakland Road, you, in theory, would go to that board or committee and say, this is what we're thinking about on for this uh, pr project that's special to the near and dear to the heart of the select board. Mm -hmm. And and for instance, the new the, the economic development uh, committee that Mark and I are, are going to be working on, the CPDC may be a good. Uh, group to try to work with um, in all their free time. Is that what you mean, Mark? Um, so there's a lot there. Um, let, let me let me go even further, if I could, before oh, before responding. Uh, and so this came up a little bit earlier in a discussion today. Um, my my hope with these liaisons would be that we are finding ways to help existing groups do things and in some cases we have newly formed groups whose mission is to kind of build an agenda and get things going and maybe economic development is a good example yeah what I want to make sure of is that we're not getting in our own way and we're not blocking things so you know where there's one liaison to things you know audit committee great example very straightforward very easy modest number of meetings like two three great easy others um, more complicated and then when you have multiple people serving on them you can run into a problem of who can attend a, a discussion before it's a meeting and maybe that's starting to get in the way of things and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I think we, we've lumped kind of everything together here as liaisons maybe maybe we did too much lumping maybe there are some things that have to be priorities that are individual responsibilities to bring back to the board others that are multiple people with a chance to literally uh, tag team to get to more of the meetings, school mm -hmm. committee being a great example of that just because of how much activity there's going to be. And others where we need a relationship, but we don't need to go to every meeting. We don't need to attempt to go to every meeting. Um, and, and I'm not trying to take this and further complicate it. Maybe I'm trying to say, look, there are, it'd be great if we could have some priorities that we could really make progress on as individuals, as groups of two in some cases, and to bring all that back to the board. And I think we make a lot more progress because we're more actively engaged. So from a, that's an interesting perspective actually. Um, and there are some, so I don't have the list, so I'm gonna look over your shoulder here. Sorry, it's my um, <laughs> so your, it, 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 is, There's a great list on the computer. Yeah, in the, in the is packet. it in the packet? Yeah, I thought I saw it in the packet. It's in the packet. Right. Page 17, 18, and 19. Lovely, thank you. Yes. Yep. There it is. I just bruised past it. All right. <laughs> so as we look at this list, you know, so let me take a step back. Um, what does the board think of Mark's 
sort of observation and proposal, which is the potential to prioritize a handful um, to deepen the relationships with those particular committees um, and have others where the relationship is perhaps, so the, the liaison is made clear, however, the expectation of attending that particular, those particular series of meetings are not as uh, expected. I think that happens quite naturally. I you mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's been my personal experience over the last five years is mm -hmm. that some need more attention than others and expect it and really seek it. Others are like, good, you're there, I got it. You know, we'll, you know, we'll communicate from time to time. If there's something big, I'll <coughs> tell you to come. I, and they, what I found is that that kind of just happens naturally. I mean, if we, I don't feel, I personally don't feel the need to codify that. Um, okay. I just, I think it will happen. Um, Bob? Now I'll get myself in trouble. Um, three or four years ago, the, the then board talked about volunteerism as a topic or a goal um, and identified some of the deficiencies on the whole process. One of them that's still true today is um, open meeting law ethics training and an opportunity for you as a board to talk to all the boards at once. So John may or may not remember we had a meeting set up in the senior center and invited all the chairs and the vice chair. And I think yep. four or five people came. Yes, I remember um, it and very that was, clearly. That was a pretty dark day for communication between you and your appointed boards, I'll say. Um, and the staff and I have kicked around in the last few weeks do we want to bring that back as a town manager's goal, just the general topic of volunteerism, to be determined really what that means? But we owe them um, more training. Yes. Uh, by law, in some cases, and probably by you know, good practice, best practice for others. Well, that was the goal of that exercise. Yeah, and, and we talked about, again, I, I don't mean to say it's right, but we talked about um, an onboarding uh, uh, practice for volunteers that wouldn't immediately send them to a board and committee, but more of an engaging process. What are your interests? What's your background? What's your skills? More of a dialogue, um, because it's really hard to give people the volunteer form and have everyone understand all the nuances of it. Some of it's pretty simple. Oh, conservation, I know what that is. Fin fine con finance committee, I know what that is. But, it, you know, you really have to make some logical assumptions based on your skills or interests as to what's on that list that would interest you. And, and it works pretty well. Tonight you saw it was really, it really works very well. But that's not to say it couldn't be improved. I've seen other towns where the process is much more, you apply to be a volunteer, not a volunteer on a board. Uh, they called X. You first say, I want to volunteer. And then there's a longer process as to, okay, let's engage you. Let's give you an overview of the organization. Let's give you some training. And then let's figure out where the best fit is. And, and the other concept that was missing in Reading, it's not done very many places, but where it is, is, is really it's done well, is rotation of volunteers. So they get to see different aspects of the organization and learn from it. And um, you know, I see that going over poorly. Well, and it, today it wouldn't be poorly. It would be poorly. But if you think of the long-term selectmen, they were three or four different boards and committees on their way to becoming a selectman, and that helped them see a different, complete, maybe more complete picture of the town. That doesn't mean every volunteer is going to benefit from that. But again, it was an observation from a few years ago that I wonder if this is something we should discuss and talk about and aim for for some of our volunteers. So I just throw that out that that's somewhat related to the discussion you're having. Um, and, and if you want to pursue it in a larger way, we can. I will say that boards and committees change. Um, the uh, topics, they have changed. So it's really hard to ironclad rules that say this is how we must behave. Um, that's just a natural flow. But I would say from, from the department, as I talked to, the boards and committees are looking more towards you for guidance as to what's our relationship supposed to be? What's the communication between us supposed to be? Um, all of them, I think, are happy to engage in that. But some of them are just wondering, is it something we're not doing that we should be doing, or, or what's going on? Um, 
many board and committee members really do sit in a silo. They're, yes. they're in this board, they may be there for a very long time, they may never do anything else. And we find on the staff level that's not helpful for a staff member to be a best you know, and productive staff member to only have a narrow perspective. We try to circulate it. So, but that's a hard thing for volunteers. You know, mm. Volunteer comes in and says, I'm interested in conservation, here's my background, I don't care about the rest. Okay. So, you know, Mark, I agree with a lot of Mar what Mark said based on history. Um, this is kind of a big topic. Um, it's not just a list of your liaison assignments, if you will. I think um, as Vanessa said, I, I think I'm not sure how I think it's 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 a it's a um, positive that we when we people volunteer, they can pick what interests them most. But what I do think really has to happen sooner than later is that there should be an onboarding, and we've talked about this right. for years, we just haven't got it done. There should be an onboarding manual for the select board, um, and there should be an onboarding manual for all the boards, committees, and commissions. And you know that would include the general things like open meeting law, conflict right. of interest, but it would also include the mission of 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 that board, committee, or commission, and what they're supposed to be focusing on, um, and and maybe the laws and regulations that they need to be they need to read up on and be aware of. I think. You know, the idea of an onboarding manual for, so we've strayed a little bit, but, yeah. um, you know, the idea of, a, of an onboarding manual for volunteers, I remember when I joined FinCom, um, Mark, I think you were the chair at the time, and I got my packet from the town clerk, and it included some, you know, legal documentation, but I knew nothing about <coughs> FinCom. My first introduction to town government, I didn't understand how, how government worked. And so you almost need a, Government 101 right. printout that's not the bylaws and the charter because I'm going to be frank and say people are not going to read No, that. I totally so agree. So I think that's yeah. sort of an unrealistic expectation. Mm -hmm. okay. But you can pull out the bits and pieces that belong to yes. each board and, and tailor it. And maybe we could ask the boards and committees to create uh, an on onboarding event and we can give, give sort of an outline um, in what format we're looking to see it. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think for format, we really should think a lot more about video as opposed to a, a mm. book. Books do a great job gathering dust. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh, a manual or something. Like a manual. That. Right, yeah, yeah. And it'll be out of date very quickly and then trying to coordinate it that way. And, and video will take a lot of curation too, but I think that society today um, yeah. People might have more time to see something interactive. Look at it on YouTube. Yeah, as opposed to, you know, kind of say, okay, tonight I'm going to yeah. try to nail the first 250 and pages. And more that would really, if people were interested in what the different boards and committees did, uh, they could look at that video. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this for town meeting also. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a, a general, it'd be great yeah. to have some basic information. I think that and the town moderator would be great for that because he has such a good voice. So I, th I think probably um, it makes sense for the select board to do it for the select board. And then especially considering we just had a conversation about wanting to have a relationship with our vol with volunteers yeah. and other boards, committees and commissions, when we're not directing them, we could say, look at the product yeah. we created for the select board. This, it's a suggestion. Yeah. This is the format we use, whether it's a video, whether it's um, a, a document. Um, and we thought maybe you'd find this model useful for your own committee commission. Which leads us beautifully into our next agenda item. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Um, which is the I have to Scouts. excuse myself. For <laughs> I will come back. I'll All right. Yeah. Um, which is to discuss the creation of a select board on boarding manual. Yes. Um, so I, I jotted down some questions here, which was, do we want to create one? And I, I think there is probably unanimous agreement that yes, we do. Um, and then how we go about doing that. 
given how many other uh, subcommittees we already have, I'm going to take a look mm -hmm. at those now, uh, to see sort of, you know, who has the bandwidth to do that. Um, and the interest. I think as a starting point, what I would envision is the high level list of topics that we would want included. You know, I think, Mark, your idea of a video is an interesting one. I like that a lot. I think to an extent, the writing would still need to be done sort of as script. a script. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I think whoever does it, um, should bring an outline first to the select to the entire board mm -hmm. um, because they could go down in a, in a in a direction that um, mm -hmm. really yeah I agree. and so if you bring an outline say you'd like to cover these four or five major topics or something like that um, so I think that that step is kind of scoping what yes. it is that we're talking about yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I would volunteer to, to participate in that. Yeah, I would love to, to do that. Yeah. Um, this is a discussion that Vanessa and I need to have, but I'm going to suggest, based on a recent email from Ray, that if you're going to work on this, just appoint one person, one of you, and then that one can work with all individual members of the board one at a time. If you appoint two, we run, it, we run into communication issues with open media law. So yeah. if you only appoint one, the one can do work with five. If you yeah. appoint two, that can't happen. It's bizarre, but... So, um, John is, has, has stepped out, but I, I don't see him fighting either Mark or Andy <laughs> for this honor. Um, so I, I feel I can sort of speak on his behalf there. So um, between the two of you, which one of you would like to be point? The official. Yeah. Well, I'll... S I'll say sort of where I'm coming from, and then um, and then you can decide whether I'm the appropriate person or not. And Mark, and, um, I'm just impressed that there's two of you vying for this yeah. role. So <laughs> I don't know if vying's the word, but go ahead. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure if vying is. It, 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 I, I came on from the board of health, and um, so a lot of the the flow of the year. Um, for the first year was challenging for me because a lot of it is budget setting the, setting the uh, tax rate um, um, setting fees um, and and according to the charter that all has to be done calculating back from town meeting a lot of that does um, and I think I would have greatly benefited from at the time, looking back, a, a sort of a um, roadmap for a typical year on the on the select board. When 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 are you looking to go over the budget? December. When are you? When is the FinCom going to start looking at that? And when do you have to go to those meetings? When when um, and and on and on and on. Um, so that's the, that's where I would be coming at it from, but I don't feel um, you know if Mark would prefer to do it, that's fine too. I think that having the benefit of some history, having gone through it, and having kind of started at least mentally, yeah, what that is, it'd be great to get that down on paper, no matter what. Probably spending some time talking with long-standing members yeah. from the past might be a good mm -hmm. kind of step, also. Yeah kind of have that discussion um, and if it's possible to have one person lead and then kind of talk one-on-ones kind of continually um, can you check with Ray too is it possible that in a, a an assignment like that could rotate at different points in time in other words person one does it for a period of time and then they hand it off to person two mm. I'll ask my guess is he's gonna start getting agita <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's, you know, let's, the, let's the see key is what, yeah. what is the work product that's coming back to the board for a vote? That's always yeah. the so I, so circle I, yeah. backwards. I, I, I see that being pretty far away. Yeah. Uh, truthfully, here, okay. I, I think there's a lot of discussion first. Sorry, I keep stepping on people. So let me. Let me John is coming back, so let me catch him up. Um, 
John, Mark, and Andy both expressed interest in being the leads for creating select board onboarding manual. I'm in favor of I took <laughs> <laughs> I took the liberty of speaking on your behalf that you would have no objection to either of them taking the lead on that. I roundly endorsed that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, so sure we, we are <laughs> we are still in need of a lead on this. Hey, could I uh, Take take a step back on all of this and suggest um, Dan and I met in subcommittee um, to bang out the um, policies. Yeah. the policies, and we 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 divided and conquered. I worked on a certain set, he worked on the uh, another set, and then we came together, and we decided at the meeting in public who was going to work on what, and then we'd reconvene, and it was. You know, we had to meet someplace. It just happened to be in, um, I forget where Bob put us, in the basement someplace. Yeah. <laughs> I think this one's unique in that. So here's my recommendation. Yeah. Andy, I feel like you've, anyone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like you've given this the most thought. Um, how would you feel about taking the first step and creating an, a suggested outline? Sure. And then we can put this on you know, either the next or July agenda. Um, oh, thank you. Um, to, you know, so not as the lead yet, right. but just as the first step. Do the outline, sure. How does that sound? That yeah, sounds great. Sounds good? Yeah. yeah, and I think that's perfect. The one thing I would suggest is that back to this theme of if, if each of us were to end up focusing on three to four things, mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure this is in the top three or four. It's not on my personal list. And I just want to make sure that we kind of put it into some kind of context here. I mean, would I put it ahead of, you know, some of the things that I'm on here? Yeah, I, I can't say it would be in the top three, truthfully. Yeah, you have the Housing Trust, the EDC, and our multi payments. Yes, and Council on Aging. Yep. So I, I'm not sure it should jump those. So that's a fair point. How about this? And if you can put together that outline, at our next meeting, time allowing, we'll each will be expected to report in on where we stand on our goals slash subcommittees. John, you and I are overdue for capital. Mm -hmm. um, and Mark, you and I are due to meet with RMLD. Um, and I, I can't to talk about um, communications. communications. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So why don't we take yeah. the next two weeks to sort of get our ducks in a row and we'll all report back and that might be a good time to discuss where this ma great. this, this um, onboarding manual fits in. Does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Bob? Um, it's slightly related, but two of the members have indicated to me that a July 16th meeting would be much more convenient a week sooner. Can you all look at your calendars and see if that works? You don't have to decide tonight. Cause I also, oh, get us to decide tonight, Bob. Well, because I need to also discuss with staff if they're available mm -hmm. that are planning to come in. Um, but the July 16th meeting with you know three attendees planned is obviously a, a difficult meeting to... I'm available to the 9th, okay. and that would be preferable to the 16th anyway. Okay, okay. so we're talking July, July 9th. 9th. July 9th. I'm also available. Okay. As is as I am as well. And I'm almost yeah. there. Ann's got a oh, I overshot. <laughs> well, I, I Ann's got some it. variables involved here. I missed I missed yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I think the ninth would be better for me. <laughs> All right. Well we're at four. Yeah. So that's already an improvement. Yeah, I think the ninth would be good for me too. Yeah, so okay. I'll circle Great. back to you as a board. I just want to check with staff. We, you could probably meet the ninth anyways, we might have to juggle each other around. We could also switch to the 23rd because we only have the one meeting in July. I'm, I'm, not available not, available I, I'm not available. I think then. John was. Nor am I. Okay, the 9th is <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have the 9th. I'll uh, come back to you to make sure. Okay. I okay. So. Um, and while we're, so the next option, the next uh, item on our agenda is future agendas. So this election. Mm. combination or yeah. not I think is an important one and we should dedicate some time to that assuming and that's that would be a conversation not necessarily a vote or would we be 
aiming to vote on that. We would to need to vote, vote to combine that. the elections. Bob? What Laura has said is as long as you buy August, August 6th, that's okay. okay. So you can discuss it as many times as you need. Mm -hmm. So what is our, I'm just looking at future agendas, Bob. Right. What it, um, what do our next agendas look like so that we can get an idea of when? Your next meeting on the 25th will definitely have a uh, tree removal hearing around 7.15. Do you anticipate that being an involved discussion? I don't know yet. Uh, okay. I plan on at least 15 minutes. And okay. I'll tell you if it's going to be longer. Um, it's by nature it's controversial because the town has said no and the resident wants yes so it's not a routine for which thing uh, Winthrop Avenue tree removal request okay. um, we have a badge pinning tentatively penciled in for that night um, I how many officers uh, two so that shouldn't be too long no. uh, there is a liquor violation um, mm -hmm. town council advised me yesterday that it could be on any future agenda. There's no time limit, so it doesn't have to be June 25th. That's why I've kind of got it into italics. Uh, but there was one of the liquor license holders that was caught in an underage operation about a week ago. I think it was Thursday. What's the action there? Um, the board will want to hear um, from the applicant and very likely, by, based on passports, levy a penalty. So that's a minimum of half an hour, potentially an hour. Mm -hmm. It may involve town council coming. Questions, I'm sure. I will not be here on the 25th. Okay. Just want to let you know. Okay. Um, the rec committee, I believe, is planning to come in. They haven't really. The subcommittee has not met in several months on Birch Meadow. I'll reach out to them. Um, but I, you know, they do plan to attend on the 25th. And if they don't have a quorum, the administrator will be there. They want to present the results of the survey, and we can go over the instructional motion from town meeting and how you need to work together. When are you planning to do that? 25th. John, you said you're not going to be here on the 25th. I you, will not. And you also you know, had mentioned earlier. Based on, you know, you're not being on the 25th news, everyone being available in July's news, so this can all move around. But you mentioned, John, that you had um, a lot of thoughts ar around the election timing. I do. So I, I don't know if you'd want to like send them in writing to Bob for for us to be aware of what they are as part of our own well I mean if this you know, I, I think we, there's so much in flux right now based on your changed attendance yeah. I think you and I just need to hash out a lot of possibilities. Okay. you know the and night could know bring a that. lot of things in for example yes. the you know the the Recreation Committee coming in um, I mean it's not here on the 25th at the moment um, mm. oh yeah it is yeah it but, is. The, so. but July 16th becomes the 9th and we have the a zoning bylaw proposed change. I don't know what that is, but uh. CPC just wants to prepare you for what they're asking at November town meeting. Okay. So it's <laughs> no, we have the PT and that's, TTF um, a series of safety, and that's going to be a long will one. Take a while, take an hour. Mm. Again, um, these things can move um, mm -hmm. in or out. Okay. It's not a lot of time critical. So Jane just wants to come in and. Um, so, so are we John, married to the 25th, I, I guess, is my other question. Um, so, Bob, I have an idea. Yes, because so, of the tree hearing. John, there yet? seems to be a lot of things in flux, to your point, Bob. So, John, I know you're particularly interested in hearing from the, the results of the Birch Meadow uh, yeah. survey, mm -hmm. as well as the election. Um, so let's, Bob, when yeah. you and I discuss future agendas, yeah. let's try and have that if possible, not take place on the 25th, but on the 9th, and maybe see what else we can move around. Will that work? Absolutely. And that would be great for me. I would appreciate that okay. courtesy. Let, let's do that. Um, Vanessa? Yes. A couple of requests mm -hmm. and a question. Okay. If they're the Birch Meadow Subcommittee, mm -hmm. who, who appoints them? Recreation. And they're just a subcommittee of the Recreation Committee. Okay. Um, and um, this, I think it's important that we, at the next meeting or soon, give an update on our progress on our, our, our goals. 
the goals that we, we've been doing? Yes, that was one of the things I had mentioned that for the next meeting, which is June 25th, yeah. we should all, in, in the next two weeks, be prepared with updates for all of us. And then the last thing is um, this, whether or not the board is interested or CONCOM is interested in purchasing this uh, this half chapter sixty one yeah. after yeah. half an acre or, or uh, half an acre parcel um, and we have senior tax relief if but but the land parcel um, may be given the price per acre and we just bought a fair amount of land at the last um, mm -hmm. meeting it's possible that the board could could uh, let that go so because well, we're holding up a, a transaction with yeah a, with a, a, all right a um so bob in addition to what we have stated here you would mention the chapter 61 land which andy just reminded us of we have the senior tax relief yeah. that had come up from victor's email um, and we have the select board goal updates can can you take a stab at putting something together for the 20 for june 25th and july 9th or july 9th yeah, I think if Jane Kinsella is available on the 25th, that might work better. But the only thing that she may not be ready for, because town council won't be done, is the policies. But I'll, well, let me work on all that. Okay. Yeah. Let's connect on that sooner rather than later, yeah, based on, I'm, on I'm what Jane can do. I'm familiar with what topics would require or be okay. better for five members as opposed to four. So, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll reach out to the recreation committee since I'm their liaison. But. Um, I mean, Jenna may have an opinion on this too. Yeah. So, okay, great. Um, based on some, com uh, I was curious. Um, when do we need? Do we need to have discussed tonight a future agenda item, or if something comes up in the interim, can that? Can oh, absolutely. Just read? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So, uh, I think in the past there had been there hadn't been a lot of sort of board discussion on what appears on agendas mm -hmm. and so this is something I've introduced as a standing item um, so that the whole board can participate in what okay. our agendas look like. Um, mm -hmm. That does not mean that that is the only thing that can be included. Okay. As, as things come up, we mm -hmm. can absolutely add them. Okay. It happens with Baba with some frequency. <laughs> Very so, good. So I just want to be clear on the proposed date change. Mm -hmm. We're getting rid of um, or we're considering not meeting on the 16th of July and instead right. meeting on the 9th. Correct. Correct. It, it seems to make sense that that's done. It's a question of what you discussed at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Let a Caitlin can come. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Unless there is anything else, can I have a motion to adjourn? Did we want to Other minutes? Mm -hmm. Oh, shh. So yeah. close. Now, and that's why I wanted to ask a question. About the yeah, sure. I have. A, I have a few things. I have on one thing too. Okay. <laughs> it's not big. The question is: When you met with jointly with the Board of Health, what did you decide? <laughs> Jean and Caitlin and I talked about that. Uh, so my the understanding I walked away from that from is that we as a board had raised numerous questions that we wanted the Board of Health to further investigate. Yes. Okay, I, I agree with that. I just and wanted to, and I don't know what the Board of Health's impression is. Jean's going to talk to them. I forget okay. what next week. So, my, I suppose, expectation for next steps is that they would do something. Work on the yeah. different issues and questions that got raised, and okay. then potentially come back, incorporate those into revised regulation, not policy, right? Right. Um, yes. And then bring that in front of us again. Okay. Wherein we could provide additional input and hopefully that would, with minor revisions, that would be the end of it. And then at that point it would go to Ray. Well, let, let me ask you, oh, an important question didn't really come up that I had hoped would and was supposed to. Um, a decision you have to make, is this going to be a document that lives under your sets of rules or their sets of rules? Do you delegate your authority to them on this? And that just didn't come up. So, and I don't want to bring it up awkwardly without the Board of Health there, but that's a future part of this discussion. Just I guess I would want to know what the implications of both uh, those scenarios yeah. are. Okay. Uh, is, it, uh, is the select board allowed to make regulations? I'm not going to say whether it's a policy or regulations, just who's in charge. 
do you want to be in charge of this or do you want to delegate that responsibility to the Board of Health is the real question. We have that jurisdiction was over that land. And then Ray can write a policy or a regulation or whatever <coughs> it is when he knows the answer to that question. I would want to know, I, I think my statement still stands, okay. I would want yep. to know what the implications are for both of those scenarios. Okay, so that may have an implication on your minutes. I, yes, I rewrote a sentence right now. Okay. So, and there, well, there actually, a, in, I was In those minutes, there's a road map to the questions you're, okay. you know, that Vanessa just talked about. I mean, there were certain things that came in that roadmap of, in those minutes that say, what about this? What about that? Right. I, mean, you I know. just wasn't sure on the ending. Yeah, at what point does town council get involved? And the answer is not quite yet. Right. Oh, that's okay. what I, that's prematurely what I would put think. in the yeah. town council. I actually kind okay. of just rewrote to okay. say that the board is waiting for board of health to come back to the Okay. That actually wasn't necessarily my expectation or, or understanding from the conversation because and I there actually it doesn't say anything in the minutes about the issues that, that I raised and they were really technical legal mm -hmm. questions. Like I found that the drafting of the regs were problematic and that they were contradictory within themselves mm -hmm. and in a way that really would require I think um, just some some legal input in into redrafting them so that they actually reflect the intentions of the Board of Health in terms of what they're trying to do um, before I'd be comfortable voting on them. So, yeah, um, and, the, and the question Ray raised is, in order to do that work and have what his work product is to be considered final that you can mm -hmm. look at, he needs to understand that basic first question because then he can write it as one of yours or one of theirs. Uh, I'm very reluctant to have the select board making policies that are really uh, full, that are really helpful in public health issues. And, and that, should be, that should fall under the, the Board of Health. And the state gives them um, pretty broad powers to make reasonable um, laws that protect public health and I think that was the design of the regulations all along and that's how I took this whole conversation I thought they just needed our permission uh, because town council said that this is you know they're they're applying a, a board of health rate regulations to town owned land uh, well, it sounds like you need to have another discussion with the Board of Health on future agendas. Yep. Okay. Thank Can you, you add that as a future agenda somewhere down the line? Okay. Can I ask where, um, is there a date set for further discussion on the communication? <coughs> and yeah. and I have to meet. Okay, so not yet. Not yet. We should do that soon. Next meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, so essentially, we need to hold our own feet to the fire, and everyone needs to be prepared to report in. Yeah. We have to hold ourselves accountable. Okay. Except John, who's away. I'll report it for us. <laughs> Please do. Or I'll take the heat. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, thank you. Minutes. Do I have a motion? I have motion. some. Well, let's no. do the motion first. Uh, motion to accept. accept. Go ahead. You do it. You're, <laughs> you're the secretary. Move to accept the minutes of the meeting of 5-21-2019 as written. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Um, I would ask to amend under liaison reports. Yes. Um, so what I had said at the last meeting was that um, the Wakefield ZBA would be meeting tomorrow, tomorrow night on the Tarrant Lane project again. Um, I would, I, my intention at that point was not to attend that meeting, but instead to attend the Reading ZBA meeting. Oh, okay. Um, what, so folks know what actually happened is I, I came to town hall and the Reading ZBA meeting was over and done with, and then I went to Wakefield to try to catch uh, the end of the Wakefield <laughs> ZBA meeting and found out that they had moved it next week so <laughs> that was my attempt to attend to and attended none okay. <laughs> but <laughs> no good deed, no good deed. <laughs> uh, uh, under liaison reports as well yes um, I hope I did not say um, that the Board of Health is working with our CASA to do some outreach uh, I my understanding was that they they are considering uh, considering working with our CASA, that they're not doing it just yet, from my, you know, my understanding. Okay. Um, 
so I didn't want to imply that that work is already happening. So, it, yeah, would, I think is is contemplating working with our CASA would be fine. Any other edits? Um, now, this is something that I think a point Vanessa had made. So, Vanessa, correct me if this is we? incorrect. Um, so, the under the charter change to allow non-residents on boards. Um, I had thought you said that the most recent example was not the ad hoc committee, but the the future human right a, a future human rights board that the ad hoc committee was looking into that you had cited as an example. You know, a future human rights board would for ex may for example want to have a rabbi on it. Um, I don't remember my exact words. Okay, there, there where is it? That was my understanding too, and that's um, that was the question that we brought, we, we to, brought uh, to the to the ad hoc. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. was no. So um, I think I just meant that the question got raised. Like that yeah, she, she didn't specify the I seat, but I would change um, the end of that first the same section. Um, to look at changing the charter to allow now residents to hold seats on non-elected policy setting, non-regulatory boards. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. an important mm -hmm. distinction. So non-regulatory. Okay. Right. Okay. And, and then I just wanted to share with you, I just changed, um, like we just talked about the last sentence under the tree lawn policy. The last sentence I had wrote huh? was the board would like town council to look at this before bringing it back, but I changed it to write, uh, to read the board would like the board of health to answer their questions and come back for another discussion. That's perfect. That works. Okay. Any other changes? Uh, one question. Um, select board office hours. Mm -hmm. mm. That would be to decided to start this in different locations in July with Mr. Halsey at the senior center. I think it's Mr. Doxer who actually has office hours. I don't know if that was just a, a mistake or it was an offer. I think well, we were in addition to your regular I think we were going to do in Yeah. Well, I was actually. Are we are we pausing the? pre-select board you know we, we, I kept them for tonight but are we are we keeping are we moving away from the 630 prior to meeting so I think my inter my understanding after our last meeting was that we would keep the ones on the docket for the next mm -hmm. few months because they've okay. already been publicized um, so perhaps we keep them through August and then we take them off future agendas yeah. starting in that's, September. That's why the July yeah. offer was an add on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and now we've got. I wasn't sure if it was just. And then, you know, if I'd rather do it in the middle of the day with them, that's fine. Well, and to the extent they've already been publicized right now, it says July 16th. Correct. So, yeah. So that would have to be changed to July, July 9th. 9th. Yeah. Which is fine. Okay. If that's what we want. Um, and then, so Bob, starting. For our next packet, if you can remove office hours, the 6.30 Tuesday office hours starting in September. Um, and then my understanding and to answer your, your sort of continued question was, we keep it as one of the options um, and work it into our rotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was asked to do what John is doing for July, that is offer the second one someplace else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sort of to you know see how the transition feels. So for the next meeting, yeah. can you determine? Can you have a determination of what you will be doing in July yes. for those office hours? In in, in August. Yep. Yes. But I'll have yep. them. Yes. For I'll. our next meeting, so that we have the month of July to advertise. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that's on your to-do list. Great. Um, any additional discussions on the minutes? Great. All those in favor as amended? Great. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor?